Okay, so round two, people. Round two. How you doing? Let me set it up on Facebook. I got his face uh, set it up for me. What's up, Eric Braun? Haven't seen you a couple days, brother. Leonidas from 300. Round two. It's this weekend, Saturday. And basically, there's really not much to do for me when you don't have your kids and you're by yourself. What's there to do? So what better thing to do than to ask the Holy Spirit to use us again, use me again. Remember again, the Bible says we are the temple of the Holy Spirit. He works through us if we submit to him to be his mouthpiece, hands, and feet. What better way to celebrate my night than to have the Holy Spirit use me to glorify Jesus Christ and bless you, right? So glory to the Father, glory to the Son, glory to the Holy Spirit. What's up, Linda, Yeshua? Good to see you. I know it's kind of late for you guys, but hit the like button. You can only comment if you subscribe because that's how I set it up for the... Oh, wait, I didn't do that. Uh-oh, hold on. You know, these guys come trolling when they say, you know, they're here to troll. You know that, guys. When they say, what denomination? The denomination that you don't go just real. If I go to your denomination, I'm going to get you thrown out because you're a spiritual bastard. So I hope you're happy. So, you, you know, you are a spiritual whore. Just be happy. You're the first victim because people have to come out. I got to insult them. One second, brethren. I forgot to do this. Uh-oh. Sam. Tham. Thup thot tham. It hot thammy. Sorry. Now. Uh, there you go. Now. We muzzle the trolls. The demons. <laughs> In me power. Okay. We ready, everybody? What's up, guys? Let's pray the Spirit fill us. Let's pray the Spirit comes to the forefront. He teaches us. We are his disciples. Let's pray the Holy Spirit purges us and controls my tongue. So let's pray together. I am tired. Some days I'm tired. Some days I'm energetic. I don't know. Maybe I'm sick. God's will be done in my life. And the Holy Spirit give me the power to accept God's will and submit to it because he knows what's best for us. He knows what's perfect for us, right? But let's pray. Oh, shit, so my so can just... Jamie, I want to talk about that. I just unfortunately went and saw it. I unfortunately went to see Padre Pio film. Let's pray, though. Let's begin in prayer, and then we'll talk about it. And then we'll open up Q&A, God willing, if God wills. Let the Spirit guide. <clears throat> yeah, I'm sure. Oh, just real. Oh, so you didn't mean to offend, even though 5 million people come on every day asking me what denomination I am? What's it to you, man? Don't worry about me. Worry what the Holy Spirit wants you to be. So let's be prayed up, guys. Let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, <clears throat> creator of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only begotten Son, our Lord, who is conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven. And sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit. The Holy Catholic Church. The communion of saints. The forgiveness of sins. The resurrection of the body. And life everlasting. Amen. These are all things we must affirm. Because they're scriptural, biblical facts that have happened and will happen. So we have to amen. Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. <clears throat> give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory both now and forever unto ages of ages in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit in Jesus' name. G cop, you know you are stupid, right? And Jivan, you're stupider than the female dog that birthed you. G cop, you are one stupid human being. You're so disgustingly stupid that you're a disgrace to the Catholic Church. You know why? There is no filioque in the Apostles' Creed. There is no filioque. And the Apostles' Creed. I 
I just recited the Apostles' Creed. This is why you're a joke and a disgrace. Do not tell people you're Catholic. Say you're Hindu. Okay? The Apostles' Creed simply says, I believe in the Holy Spirit. Okay? Ah, Lord, have mercy on us. The stupidity. What the Apostles' Creed? Spirit, why do you mean? Holy Spirit, strengthen my throat. My heart, my lungs, my chest, my arteries, with the health I need. Grant me perfect self-control, please, Holy Spirit, to stay healthy and fit. Use my health to glorify Jesus Christ. Make my voice pleasing to the ears of your servants. <clears throat> and I ask, Holy Spirit, that you illuminate our hearts, our minds, our souls, and spirits. Open our eyes, both physically and spiritually, and our ears to your beautiful, glorious, majestic, loving voice. <clears throat> Help us to plunge the depth of Scripture feast on the meat of scripture and not only understand scripture but give us the power then to live out the scriptures obey the scriptures proclaim the scriptures even unto death without compromise and nourish us and feed us holy spirit nourish and feed my daughters nourish and feed our loved ones nourish and feed even my daughter's mother with the flesh of jesus christ the blood of jesus christ your eternal loving companion and heal us and make us whole spiritually emotionally psychologically and physically and I ask Holy Spirit that you come to the forefront, crucify our flesh, increase in us and our loved ones, my daughters, their mother, may we decrease and guide us to be your vessels, your mouthpieces, your hands and feet, working in and through us to build up the church of Jesus Christ, to build one another, to convict evildoers and sinners to repent, to muzzle dogs and crush their mouths and teach them to fear the Lord and bring them to the feet of Jesus. And in all things, magnify Jesus Christ, your eternal companion, the Father's heart, May the Lord Jesus sit and throne upon our hearts, Holy Spirit. Hearts of our loved ones, my daughters, their hearts, the throne of Jesus, even their mother. And may the Lord Jesus cleanse and wash, purify all of us in his precious blood. Please, Holy Spirit. And save me from stammering, from stuttering, from my lisp. Save me from errors, misinformation. Correct me on the spot. And the gifts you've given me for ministry, perfect them in me. Please, Holy Spirit, to use them lawfully. Perfect recall of every jot, tittle, portion of Scripture. And perfect obedience to live in perfect obedience to every portion, jot, tittle, scripture, to be a doer of your word, not a hypocrite, and perfect exegesis. Destroy the beams from our eyes. Destroy laziness, slothfulness. Destroy hypocrisy, maliciousness, gossip, slander, jealousy, envy. Destroy every form of blasphemy and idolatry from us. Please, Holy Spirit. Guard our tongues and our mouths to glorify, love, and worship, and adore our God and Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, and never betray or deny or blaspheme or shame him. And save us that we never fall into any scandal. The temptation is real. But you are almighty. Own us and possess us and fill us to never succumb to lust. Whether lust of the flesh. Whether lust of status or position. To never misuse the gifts of the Lord Jesus. Your gifts. To bring more attention to ourselves or money or position. That we die to ourselves and bring all glory to the Lord Jesus. Sanctify us. Take over this ministry. Take over this session, take over our lives, take over all we own, take over my daughters, take over their mother, take over our loved ones, and guide us, please. Bless the internet connection, the audiovisual qualities. Beatify us with the beauty of the Father, the beauty of the Son, Lord Jesus Christ, with your infinite beauty, Holy Spirit, and fill us with your fruit. To conquer Satan, crush him under our feet by the power of the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, and bring them and grant them attentiveness to focus and not to be distracted. And I'm not distracted. Take over, Holy Spirit. We ask you. You are the teacher. We are disciples. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. In the name of our God and Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. All right. Real quickly, you let me talk about Padre Pio film. You guys ready? Remember, there's going to be a 16-second delay. So I will give you the link. If you guys want to talk to me and I don't know you, Lori, good to see you, sister. The Lord preserve you. Preserve all of you. If I don't know you, you're going to have to call me on Skype until I get to know you. What's up? Jesus is Lord. Now that he's saved. Lepanto, what's up, brother? Okay, now. Just real, you're barking again? Okay, no. Why why, why delete his comment? Sorry, Just real. They delete your comment. I thought maybe you were trolling. No, he asked you a good question. If he's apologetic and he's being sincere, don't just delete his comment. That's a good question. When Jesus comes, it will be united. We strive 
and seek to be one. But until Jesus, our Lord, returns, we strive for that. True unity based on the truth of Scripture, not compromise, but it will only be a reality when Jesus Christ, our Lord, returns. Now, the Padre Pio movie. Are you ready? MSC, you can come up and ask me even here. Don't worry about it. I'll get you the link. Are you ready? I know I'm going to get you curious to go see it, sadly, because we're curious. So I'm going to say it. You're going to see it. It's trash. I went and wasted eight bucks to see this film. It's trash. It is trash. It is a socialist movie. It is a movie promoting socialism, socialism, and using the name of Padre Pio to deceive people to come and watch it because Padre Pio, Pio appears in a few select scenes the whole film is centered on socialism and how socialism is good and socialism is actually what's the word I'm looking for? Holy Spirit, save me from error and anoint me to speak clearly for your glory, Father, for your glory, Lord Jesus Christ, for your glory, Holy Spirit. That socialism is actually compatible with biblical values and they portray Portray, 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 and betray. Save me from error, please, Father. Please, Lord Jesus, please, Holy Spirit. Padre Pio, as a mentally disturbed person, they betray him as a mentally disturbed person. And there was some very troubling scenes. A woman that was fully naked, because they portray, portray Padre Pio when he's young, struggling in faith, and battling demons, battling lust. So they have him imagining a naked woman, fully naked. You see her on the screen. And then there's a scene where Padre Pio is fully naked and you see his back, backside and his buttocks. And there's a scene which Michael Lofton played. And I'm going to repeat the scene. Are you guys ready? He's yelling at a woman who's having lust for her child. She was a, a lesbian pervert having incestuous desires. And in the film, whatever his name is, I can't pronounce his name, the actor playing playing Padre Pio, you know what he says? He says, can I say it? Now, if you have young children, cover your ears. Can I repeat it? Are you guys ready? I'm giving you a few seconds. I'm going to repeat what he says to her because he gets angry and livid. And so you know what he says? Okay, ready? So remember, there's a 16-second delay. All right, so that's why I'm waiting. He yells... At the top of his lung, he says, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Padre Pio is not the focus of the film. They use this blessed saint's name to deceive you to come because it's all about the glory of socialism. They use Padre Pio as an excuse to get you to come and see the film. It is one of the dullest, most boring films, and it's a disgrace to this man's legacy. I've heard that there are people who are still alive that can confirm and bear witness that he did miracles by the power of the Holy Spirit. He was truly a man who walked with Jesus Christ and did miracles that people are still witnesses who can verify. Grandchildren, the children of parents who knew him and can verify he did miracles. So he's a bona fide saint, use of the Lord Jesus Christ, but you won't get it from this film. You're going to get a young Padre Pio who's struggling with lust and anger and doubt, who's got demons attacking him, and he sees a demon appearing as a fully, and it's full nudity. There were kids in the theater. In fact, this is probably the first time I've seen in years Five people walked out and left the theater before the movie finished. Five. I counted. Five. Five people walked out before the movie finished. Five. And then they showed whoever the actor is. I can't pronounce his name. Shia, Lebo, whatever the hell his name is. He's naked, showing his backside, his budget, and he's screaming. Ah! He's screaming like a madman. It's all about socialism. I swear to you, 
90% of the film was about socialist agenda. It's all about socialism. They mention it. I'm not lying. Guys, I'm not exaggerating. Now, sadly, you're going to get curious, your sinful flesh, to go see it. But understand, if you go see it, you're paying. How in the world did this movie, this shows you how miraculous Almighty God is, that our trying God who's Almighty, who's Almighty over Satan, can even take the evil filth of Satan and use it to bring a greater good. Because if this movie let Shia to be Catholic, man, you know it was God. This movie was disgusting. I actually thought I was going to learn something about Padre Pio because I used to hear of him when I was staunchly anti-Catholic and the stigmata. This movie, if you have no idea who this man is, if you're not a Catholic, you watch this movie, you're going to think this man was a psycho. You will think he was psychologically disturbed. That's how they portray him. But that tells you how majestic, glorious, beautiful our God is. The Almighty Father, Son, and Spirit, even through such a shameful film, it got Shia to want to become Catholic. Pathetic film, brethren. Do not go see it. It was a disgrace, right? So there you go. The movie was a socialist agenda. It was all about socialism. I'm like, what? The? And I was wondering myself, what the hell does socialism got to do with Padre Pio? I'm thinking, oh, maybe it's because he lived at that time. Socialism was on the rise. And this was, I guess, Italia, Italy. I don't know. And somehow through that, Padre Pio is going to come to prominence and do miracles and bring people to the Lord Jesus Christ. None of that. None of that. Right? None of that. In fact, Kiri Leeson, good I told you because if you took your daughters there, you would see full nude, a full nude scene of a woman. Man, dude, fully. I'm like, what is <laughs> and you know what's shameful? The people that were there were an older crowd. There were people 50s, 60s, 70s, and I could tell they were devout Catholic, and they came wanting to learn about Padre Pio. Five people left. Five got up and left. And then in one scene, Shia, who's playing Pedro Pio, you see his backside, you see his ass cheeks. His ass cheeks. His butt cheeks. And screaming. Ah! Ah! Screaming. What the hell, man? Screaming for what? I didn't get it. I learned nothing about the man. What I learned was, what I learned honestly, and I'm, I'm going to, yeah, two nude scenes. What I learned honestly, walking away, had I not known better, he was psychologically disturbed. That's what you want. If you're not a Catholic, you don't know about Padre Pio, you're going to walk away thinking this dude was uh, psychologically disturbed, demonized. You're not going to see him as a saint. I'm sorry, you won't. Not exaggerating. Right? They portrayed him as a guy who had mental issues, emotional, doubting the faith. Now, obviously, this is the younger Padre Pio. I don't know his life. Because everyone goes through dark moments in their faith. On that level, I can understand. We all struggle. But, okay. And they end it with, yeah, anyway. Should I give you the ending because you're not going to watch it? Can I give you the ending? Because you're not going to watch it, right? Guys, let me know if I can give you, because I don't want to give, you know, give it away if you're going to watch it. This will tell you how baffling this film was. Everyone got confused. Okay, at the ending, they had free elections. I think it was Italy. I don't even know where it was. See, that's how much the film confused me. And the Socialist Party won. Now watch this, guys. The Socialist Party won. Okay? But the powers that be were angry, and they had a corrupt father in their pocket. In the film... The, the Roman Catholic bishop, was it? Maybe priest? Was a corrupt father whom they had, right? In their pocketbooks, paying him off. That's the theme. That's one of the themes. And so the elections went to the guy who was a socialist, but his enemy got upset. And then they did a scandal by saying, oh, it was rigged. So they brought in this... Italian high-ranking official who's going to maintain order. 
And so when they were now going to claim the victory and install the mayor, these are all socialists. All these guys who are not socialists lined up with bayonets and guns and saying, no, there's no celebration. You robbed the election. You, you rigged it. I'm the mayor. And then all of a sudden, one lady ran, banging on the door to let, let them in because they rightfully, their, their mayor, the guy they want, rightfully want, and they gunned them down. <laughs> Killed them dead, gunned them down. And then the last scene is Padre Peo. He's crying before the crucifix. He's crying and crying and crying. And then all of a sudden, you see a huge hand with a hole in it, wrapping his hand over Padre Pio. And that's supposed to be the hand of Jesus. Young Padre Pio. So the hand, you see there's a hole. So it's supposed to be Jesus. Puts his hand on his chest and he grabs it and he cries. Uh, 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 and movie ends. And the movie ends. That's it. Ended. Um, <laughs> that's it? I'm looking. That's it? That's all? They did have him do one miracle only. A guy couldn't walk. He sat next to him and he says, I don't want he said, like, you can overcome it. And he did the sign across. And the guy got up and started walking. That was it. I, that's how it ended. After that bloodbath where they're killing the women and the men, gunned them down, the Socialist Party, that won, so they're the good guys. The other guys with the father who's in their pocketbook, they're all corrupt, gunned them down. And the last scene, and the last scene, Padre Pio is before, I, there's a crucifix and he's praying and then all of a sudden, the hand of Jesus reaches over you know it's in because there's a hole. And I forgot, was the hole in the palm or in the... I, I don't know. And then he grabs a hand and he starts crying. <laughs> and credits. Movie's over. Movie's over. There you go. That's Padre Pio. What a disgrace, man. All the hype and all this. and It's a socialist movie. So now with that said... I'm going to try to play some clips from Matt Slick. But before that, I'm going to now give the stream yard. What a way to waste my Saturday. Because I, I try to do stuff on the weekend by myself. I know my kids. So I look to do stuff like maybe go see a film, go walk, go to some malls or something. I said, okay, let me go see the film. It fried me out. Burned me out. So there you go. So all right. All right, there you go. So here it is, guys. Now, if I don't recognize you, you're not coming on my stream yard. You're going to have to call me on Skype. But here is the stream yard link. My Skype, I'm going to put it on the screen. So there you go, guys. Don't waste your money. Now, I need some of you to send me eight bucks. I want to punish you for wasting eight bucks. So somebody, you better send me eight bucks today. But anyway, there you go. So until we have some people who want to ask questions or challenge me, now, anti Trinitarians. You're here, right? Come and refute the Trinity biblically and prove your concept of God is biblical. Right? And if you have questions about Trinity or other topics, I'll entertain that as well. But before I do that, let's play a clip from the late Dr. Anis Sharosh's debate with the late Dr. Ahmed Didat. Dr. Ahmed Didat? Oh, that's stupid. The late Dr. Anis Sharosh debate with the late Ahmed Didat. It's just a short clip or a Muslim clip. Something that took place in their first debate, is Jesus God? Because it just tells you the Muslims are, they're silly. They're, they're kids. Jivan, Javita, you know what I told you guys, right? You know you guys are not coming on unless you Skype me, especially you, Javita, that you want to show me your white background because I think you want to show me. I don't know who you are, buddy. You're going to have to Skype me, man. You think I can hear you? Okay. Oh, I made a mistake. What's up? We can't hear you. What's going on? Kate, if I'm in Chicago and you're there, I'm going to leave. Are you in Chicago, Kate? Then I'm going to leave the state. Kate, you even look like a Muslim. Okay, John. All right. There you go. 
Jivan, why, you want me to be in Chicago? Why? You trying to propose? No, I don't live in Chicago. Are you in Chicago? Guys, if she's in Chicago, leave Chicago immediately. She even looks like a Muslim. She's got a hijab. Kate Colome? All right, anyway. Okay, guys. Yeah, well, he was wearing a mask because, you know, he wanted to show me that he's ready to do muta with the Shia in Iran. All right. Jivan, you know I'm going to send you out of here, right? Bye-bye, Jivan. Hold on, no, he left me a private message. Jivan, I don't know you're Christian. No. You're going to have to Skype me, sir. Skype me. Just real. I don't know who you are, buddy. Uh, I don't know if you're the same guy in my comment section. You are? Sorry if I offended with that. Uh, I just don't know who you are, but go I'm ahead. I'm just, I'm Christian Orthodox as well, so I just wanted to ask you a question. I'm from Romania originally. I wanted to ask you a question because uh, I saw I saw a verse in Quran where it says uh, Quran 4, 100, Muslims should not be in non-Muslim countries. So why they're here? Why why they they stay in non-Muslim country when it says clear that if they remain, unless of purpose of the business or um, study, they will be kufar if they stay, right? Well, you assume that most Muslims know their religion and care for religion. Now, by the way, I just want to say proud of you, Sister Kate. Pro proud of you. Lord bless you. Here you have, guys, a very devout Catholic sister. God bless you, sister. What is it, buddy? I say God bless the sister. Okay, good. Yeah, thank you, brother. Proud of her. I just want to say glory to Jesus Christ. You are trying to be a very modest sister who loves the Lord, and you're veiled. I'm proud of you. I didn't know who you are because you're asking if I'm Chicago. I mean, if you want me to give you my social security and my bank routing too, I can do that. But no, I'm not in Chicago, sister. But God bless you. I'm proud of you. Hold your head high and be fu full of the Holy Spirit and walk in love with Jesus Christ and practice your faith and teach others. So I'm very proud. She's a sister who's veiled. Okay, now what's your question, sir? Yeah, okay. I just... Okay. Okay. Let, me, let me answer your question, sorry. Yeah. Uh, my, I can show you now because, uh, yeah. Let me show you now. I was scared to show you. But anyway, what's that behind you? Are you in an airport? No, no, no. I work in uh, in a police department. <laughs> You're a policeman? Yeah. What? Yes. Someone sent you after me? Because I'm, no. I'm not popular with no. the police. No, 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 no. Are you in America, sir? No, sir. Okay, good. Then all right. Because you're a policeman. All right. Now, I like that. Romania. 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 Oh, so they have police in Romania. Okay, now, to answer your question, oh. you, think, you think that Muslims know their religion and practice it. The majority Muslim don't know their religion. The majority Muslim don't care for their religion. The majority Muslim are sick of living in Muslim countries because there's no opportunity for growth. So they see that their opportunity for growth, it comes in the West. That's majority of people. Just like majority of people who claim to be Christian, are they really Christian? No, because many, many basically just by by saying, but they're not practicing actually the teach of the church father. Many can yeah. say that I'm Christian, but do you actually practice? So you see, teachings? now for those Muslims, they're here because they don't know Islam. They want a better life. Now, those Muslims that do know Islam, this is what we call stealth jihad. They know that Allah and his messenger has commanded the Muslims to spread Islam all over the world. So they're going to try to find ways to do it. So what they do is that minority Muslim that knows Islam will come here and settle and then try to build up a large number of Muslim population and then have enough of them to try to then take over that area until they finally dominate. This is what's happening in the UK. There are people now in the UK who cannot enter certain areas of the UK because the Muslims have taken it over completely. So, yes, I, I, I seen on TV and also I think it's in majority of the Western Europe, like Germany and France as well. So, this uh, is this why is we pray for Poland. God bless Poland. May the Lord Jesus bless the Polish people. I've been told they do not allow Muslim immigration. God yes, bless they don't. 
they don't. And also in the Balkans, yeah. like for, for us, like for instance, in Romania, we are very strict uh, regarding that. The, I'm sorry to say that. this because it's not that the majority of Muslims are decent people. They don't know Islam. This is a fact. But it's that small percentage that know Islam. They're the cancer that spread and will bring destruction to any society they come to. I totally so, agree with you, uh, Mr. Sam. I totally this agree This is why, with my you. friend, if I ever leave America, I may go to Poland. I may go to Poland, and I'll probably live in Poland because there's no Muslim, no Muslim migration. I probably will do that. Now, if Romania is like that, I'll come to Romania. I, like I hope it? you're going to come one day here as well. You, you like oh, it. Wait, gonna, if I go to Poland, you're going to come there? Uh, in Poland, <laughs> I will come, yeah, if... If it's oh, any, if you do any teachings or so, like I definitely, I'm even following you. So that's why I came there. I just wanted to ask what denomination, because I have, for instance, I have I'm a not, Syrian I, I friend. I don't know yet. It, it's it's as I said. I love the Orthodox Church. I love the Eastern Catholic Church and the Byzantine Catholic Church. So my path is towards those churches, and I really do love the Eastern Catholic Church. But how about this? Why don't I sell myself if I find a beautiful Polish Catholic girl, I'll become Catholic. If Fair I find enough. a beautiful Romanian Orthodox girl, I'll become ro or Orthodox. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, my, fair enough. Instance, my, my, so wait, my fiance... you're telling me fair enough? So you're saying prostitute myself? And no, 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 no. You evil, no, no, no. evil, evil Romanian with the very no. gorgeous nostrils that you like to pick. No, so for instance, my 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 fiance uh, was um, was uh, Protestant. Was? But my fiance was. She was Protestant. Is your fiance or no? My fiance was Protestant, but she moved to Orthodoxy recently. Oh, so she's still your fiance. Yes. So she moved. You know she... what that was going on? The Shia are having fun with your mother. They're doing muta with your mother. That's what's going on. So that's what the hell's going on. Shut your pie hole before I take that bee and have him sting your arse. Okay, now. So now, how long have you been with her? Oh, uh, well, I have one year, sir. You've been with her one year? Yeah. One year, huh? Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, hey, hold on. Oh, yeah, well, someone's saying, what about Rome? Well, if I'm Eastern Catholic, Eastern Catholic, Roman Catholic, they're the same church. They're in communion. That's one church. I agree, but can Daniel, I tell you something? Mr. something. Yeah, hold on, dude. I know you want attention, this person here. Yes, if I become Catholic, obviously I'm going to look to someone who's going to have the same beliefs that I do if God wants me to get married. I'm not saying, I'm just saying, so of course, Catholic. Because the Orthodox will not marry Catholic. But from what I gather, you Catholics can help me understand. Can a Catholic marry an Orthodox? I don't know this. I'm just asking if people know. Uh, uh, it's... Not quite, because it's not in the communion with okay, us. So no. Now, coming so, back to you, you've been with her for a year. Yes. So okay. yeah, we. When so are you she get moved. I, uh, next year, hopefully, if we okay. have enough finance well, to do the well, wedding. Well, here's what you're gonna do. You need to go ahead. Sir. Make sure you love Jesus Christ. She loves Jesus Christ, and stay pure. No touchy, touchy. No, yes, no touchy, but sir, touchy. I want to tell you. I agree with you, but I want to tell you that she didn't convert because of me. She converted no. because actually because she checked. Yeah, I told her to not do it because of me or so. Do it because of God. Yes, she didn't know. It's just a coincidence. The guy that she fell in love with, with his beautiful nostrils, he's Orthodox. <laughs> and she went from Protestant Orthodox, not Catholic. Coincidence, not because of you. Okay, but anyway, do you have any other questions, brother? Because I have yeah. to move on. No, no, that's fine. Thank you very much for having that me up, sir. And as I said again, I apologize if I had put no, it's uh, okay. I didn't remember. I get a lot of trolls, they come in mock, so I didn't know. You no, were, I'm not a troll. Okay, yeah, okay. God bless you, sir, and keep God up the good you. work that you do. Keep praying for me, all right? I appreciate you. Yes, of course, sir. God bless you. Okay, buddy. Peace. All right, let's go to some clips until we get some callers, all right? Some clips now. Hey, guys, isn't it a coincidence, guys? Guys, listen. It. Oh, she didn't convert to Orthodox because of me. No, no, no. She was Protestant. She's dating an Orthodox. So of all the churches she converted was Orthodox, not Catholic. Gee, it wasn't because of him. Huh? No, it was for God. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. All right. 
Yeah, yeah. Right, Truth? I would put your picture on Truth, but I can't do that. Yeah, I can't do that. Because, yeah. Anyway, God bless you and preserve you too, all of you. All right, let's play this clip until we get someone out. You guys come on, and I don't recognize you're going to have to get me on Skype. But here's the first clip I want to play, and we're going to go into it. Pray the Spirit fill us. Hopefully we'll have some fun. We'll laugh. We'll cry. We'll be convicted, transformed, and fall more in love with the Word and the God of that Word, Father, Son, and Spirit. So let me play this clip, okay? Let me get it. Not because of me, Sam. No, Sam. Not me. No, no, no. I am good boy. Olga, where is Oli? Not because of me, Olga. All right, here's the clip. Is by darkness to fire, this, this Mohammedan snow liquor, he took a clip from Anish Roche's debate. Crowd feels Anish Roche didn't answer the question. I'll show it on my phone. I think I'll show it on my phone. Crowd feels, right? Olgi, Ola. Okay. Here's it. Let's, let's play it. You ready? Wink, wink, Marcy. What's up, Tippy Bear? Don't tip over. <laughs> Guys, you have question challenges? There's the link. If I don't recognize you, you're going to have to do it on Skype until I trust you. Yeah, Oli. Where is Sven? I am Svel. Oli. I am Svel. Olga, where's Sven? Ask Oli. I am Svel. All right, anyway. Here it is. Did Jesus pray? No. If so... The next question is prefaced in the name of Allah, did Jesus pray? If so, why does an all-perfect claim by, that's a claim by Christians, the questioner says, why does an all-perfect God need to pray? And to who did Jesus pray? Did you hear it? Dr. Shosh. Why does an all-perfect God need to pray? And to whom did he pray? Okay, now hold on, I'm getting a little cold. It's too cold in here. Okay, I'm going to just play it as I take care of it. I'm gonna, you won't see the screen, but here. Can you hear? Tell me if you can hear. Because it's freezing here. Beloved friends, how lovely it is to be with you. And I'd like to say to our brother, I trust we will have another occasion to share the same platform together. And perhaps I could even suggest a topic like he suggested the topic. That's the animal. The answer to the question. See, they can't behave. One of the difficulties apparently some of you are having is your God is too small. God is big enough to come down to say to you, I love you. Can you understand that much? God is love. And as such, he comes in the form of a man, a perfect man at that, conquering every sin, never sinning, and as man representing you, he was praying to the Heavenly Father. Remember, he answered the he question mentioning about while Jesus was on the cross, he was saying, Eli, Eli, I'm sure you recognize he was using the Arabic, but Jesus was not speaking Arabic. He was saying simply, my God, my God, why did you forsake me? And when Jesus died, God does not die. His body died. He forever lives. Yep. Please good. remember that. He answered. So he was right. speaking to the Heavenly Father. He answered correctly. But now watch the Muslims. You think they, they're listening? Listen to the uproar. I'm afraid there are no supplementaries because I'm getting 300 at the same time. So we are going to continue with the next question. Remember. That's, that's Cat Stevens. That's Cat Stevens. Yusuf Islam. That's Cat Stevens. You saw that, right, guy? This guy here? This is Cat Stevens, a famous singer who converted, became Muslim, Yusuf Islam. He was a very famous singer in the 80s. You can still find his songs. Cat Stevens. Here he is at the debate watching Didat and Isharosh. His name is Yusuf Islam. Carlos, I don't know who you are, buddy. You better come on uh, Skype so I can verify. I, I am going to ask for quiet, sir, or you will be ejected from this meeting. If the person to whom the question is addressed does not answer the question, then it is for him a defect and an advantage to his opponent. That's it. You see, caught it? So there, oh, he didn't answer. No, actually, he answered perfectly. 
He answered perfectly. And that was Cat Stevens, brethren. Cat Stevens is one of the famous converts to Islam. He was a pop singer. You can listen to his songs on YouTube with Cat Stevens. He became a Muslim, I believe, in the 80s. His name is Yusuf Islam. He was there. He was there at the debate between Arni Sharosh and Ahmad Didat. And he's still a devoted Muslim. Cat Stevens, Yusuf Islam. Now, Arni Sharosh answered perfectly. But now we're going to turn the tables. We're creatures of repetition. We need to hear something repetitively until it becomes second nature. I've done millions of sessions and written millions of articles, and I'll give you a few, on Allah praying and even the God of rabbinic Judaism praying. Emmanuel good see you. It's been a while. So let's go into some meat, revisit things we already know, to hear them again so it can be solidified. We can recall them and for the new people. I'm going to show you that all of the Quran prays and worships and the God of rabbinic Judaism prays and worships. And I'm going to give you my article. We're going to go through it. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, as Holy Spirit anoints us and fills us to overflowing. But any Rosh was right. But do you think the Muslims cared? They didn't care about the answer because they're not looking for an answer. They want to embarrass you. What is the answer? Jesus is distinct from the Father. If someone tells you, if Jesus is God, then how can God pray? Who is praying to? Let me give you an article on that. Hold on. I wrote, man, this is probably an article that's over 12 years old. Here it is. Okay. Let me show you here. Let's go to individual authors. I'm going to give you the link and I'm going to show it on the phone. One second. Cats in the cradles and the silver spoon. Little bill. By the way, that's not Cat Stevens. Thomas, you and I, you and I have serious mental issues. I'm not going to blame you, Thomas. You and I are Syrian and we got issues. Cat Stevens did not sing Cat, Cats in the Cradle. Oh, Thomas. Thomas, you confused the song Cats in the Cradle with Cat Stevens. You know, Thomas, in the real world, not your, your world or mine, not your world or, or mine, in the real world, you can have someone called Cat Stevens and there be a song, Cats in the Cradles, and they're not one and the same. But, but in your world and mine, if someone has the name Cat and there's a book with the word Cat, like Dr. Zeus, Cat in a Hat, or there's a song with the word Cat, then they're the same person. So yes, Thomas, Cat Stevens is Cat in the Hat, Dr. Seuss, who eats green eggs and ham, Sam I am, and he's Cats in the Cradle. <laughs> oh my goodness, dude, that was good. I, I'm trying not to laugh, I can't. Because that came out of nowhere. I just looked at the comment. Wait, what? Cats in the Cradle. Okay, that just came out of nowhere. Here, watch here. See? So, you know what? I'm not making it up. I try not to laugh. Okay, I try not to laugh. But I said, no, no, that, that one. See, remember, he's a Syrian. I'm a Syrian. We grew up with with, with each other, so we got issues. Yep, Harry Ch Chachin. I thought his name was Chapin. Yeah. Cats in the cradles and the silver spoon. Little boy. Blue. I don't know. We ain't got a home and I don't know when we can. All right, anyway. So let me explain by showing you an article I wrote. And here's the index, and I'm going to show it to you on my screen. All right, here it is. Click on it, brethren. Click on that link. That was good, Thomas. Thomas, that broke. <laughs> Classic, dude. You and me, we can revive the Three Stooges. My son went to college just the other day. Here's the link. Now watch here, brethren. These, this is where you're going to find the articles that I started writing in 1999. That index. All my older articles from 1999 are there. Now, if you just go through the list, watch here. Let me show you. Okay. Look at how many articles. Click on the link. Look. Okay. And if I do this, look. These are all articles, rebuttals on Trinity, Christ as God and man, the Holy Spirit. Islam, Muhammad, Quran, right? Allah, 
Bible, salvation. You see? You see how many articles? And that's not all of them. Now, when you go to the top, you're going to find this article. Okay? Cats and... Okay? If Jesus is God, if Jesus is God, was he praying to himself? Let me show it to you here. Come on, man. It's not working? Come on, dude. Let me show it to you here. And then I'm going to explain it, and we're going to go into it. You guys ready for me? Stuff you've heard? and Stuff for some of you may be the first time? Okay, here you go. See the article? Let me do it. It's right there. It's article number two. You see what the first article is? If Jesus is God, how can God die? Now notice the second article. If Jesus is God, was he praying to himself? This is over 12 years ago. One of the first articles I wrote. So let me get you the link and I'll discuss it. So here you go. And I want to turn the tables. Are you ready for me to turn the tables? Because okay. back then, we didn't have live stream and YouTube. We didn't have any of that. So we were rele relegated to this. Right? Writing articles and rebuttals. All right. So, number one, guys, listen to me carefully. And I'm going to show you that the rabbis say their God prays and the Muslim God prays. So, guys, I need you to listen because I want you to learn. Number one. Prayer is more than just worship. This is where we Christians fail to understand. Prayer is intimate, loving communion with God. With God as our Father, with Jesus as our brother, and with the Holy Spirit as our advocate. It's not just worshiping God. It has to be more. It has to be an intimate, personal communion and relationship. If you have the wrong idea of prayer, where prayer to use worship, then your attitude toward prayer will be lacking because to you, it's simply ritual. No, prayer is meant to be intimate communion with God where you speak to him as you speak to your best friend, as you speak to your loving father, as you speak to your, let's say, children. Prayer is supposed to be intimate personal communion with God. It's supposed to be that way, right? So if you define prayer as more than worship, more than supplication and asking, but also intimate personal communion where you talk to God as your friend and he talks to you because that's what it says, Exodus 33, 11. Here, let me show you from scripture so you guys don't think I'm lying. And Jesus himself said, you are my friends. You're no longer my servants. Meaning, you're more than a servant. You still serve me as your God, but you're more than that. You're my friends. Here, but here. Watch what God wants. Watch what the true God wants from you and me. Okay? The true God wants from you and me. Let me show you. Let me just get the verses all ready for you. Okay? Here you go. Exodus 33, 11, Using the Legacy Standard Bible because it uses the word Yahweh. Focus and learn, brethren. Exodus 33, 11. Okay. Thus, Yahweh used to speak to Moses face to face, just as a man speaks to his friend. You got it? May the Lord increase the numbers for his glory. You guys got it? You see it? What does God want to speak to you directly directly? Personally, intimately, he wants to be your friend, your brother, your father. Right there. I'm not making it up. Then Moses would return to the camp, and his attendant Joshua, the son of Nun, a young man, would not depart from the tent. Okay, that's Exodus 33, 11. Now look what God says to Miriam and Aaron by way of rebuke. How does he speak to Moses? Let me give you the context. Numbers 12, 6 to 8, so you can see. And then, how does he speak to those that are close to him? Here you go. Here. Numbers 12, 6 to 8. And then I'll show you Jesus saying that of us. Pay attention, brethren. Tom, everyone else, pay attention. And he said, 
Hear now my words. If there's a prophet among you, I, Yahweh, shall make myself known to him in a vision. So I'll appear in a vision to him, right? I shall speak with him in a dream. Not so with my servant Moses. He is faithful in all my household. With him, I speak mouth to mouth, face to face, mouth to mouth, direct, friend to friend. Indeed, clearly, and not in riddles. And he beholds the form of Yahweh. Why then were you not afraid to speak against my servant, against Moses? Okay? Tongues are languages, but there's a heavenly language. Stay focused. Don't change the topic right now, brother. Now watch what God says about Abraham. Isaiah 41, verse 8. Isaiah 41, verse 8. See, Palermo, no one asks your view, right? Palermo? Palermo, you know you're going to get out of here, right? Did he ask you for your view, Palermo? Is this your channel for ch to chime in, Palermo? Who gives a damn for your opinion that you're chiming in? Did anyone ask you to chime in? Get out of here. Don't come back. Arrogant trash coming here and trying to talk as if he he's... <clears throat> Qualified to speak. We don't even know who the hell you are. All right. Isaiah 41, verse 8. But you, Israel, my servant, Jacob, who I've chosen, seed of Abraham, my friend. Seed of Abraham, my friend. You see it now? Okay, now watch what Jesus says. Uh, Allah Gaming, I'm tired of the Shia molesting you and your mother. And then bringing Jamal Muhammad White to defend the Shia molesting you and your mother as trash like your dog Muhammad. Camel piss be upon him and your mother. Okay, you little bastard. Anyway, now watch this. Sorry, Lori, the demons are manifesting. But you guys pay attention in Jesus' name. May he shield us from distractions and help me focus so I can bless you. Now watch this, Lori and everyone else. Abraham, my friend, now look what our Lord says. Look what our Lord says. John 15, 12 to 15. John 15, chapter 15, verses 12 to 15. Okay? Pay attention. John 15, verses 12 to 15. This is my commandment that you love one another, just as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that one lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. Conditional. What did Jesus say? You are my friends if you do what I say. John 15, 14 and 15. He's saying, I don't just want to be your Lord, your master. I want to be your friend, your brother. And my father wants to be your father and you his children. And the Holy Spirit wants to be your advocate. Did you know one of the names of God is Ahia? I did a session on it. I wrote an article. One of God's name is I did a session. Go on my YouTube channel. Put in Ahia. One of the names of God is Ahija. Right? Ahia. You know what that means? My brother is Yah. You know that? I'm not lying. One of the Hebrew names for God in the Old Testament. And I'm going to give you my article. Just be patient. I'm going to give you my article. One of the names of God in the Old Testament is Ahia. Or better, ach, ya, ach. I'm saying it ah, but it's pronounced ach, ach, ya. Your ach, ach, ya, ach, ya. My brother is ja. My brother is ja. So you have God's name as Abiya, my father's ja, and ach, ya. Ahia, my brother is Jah. Here, let me get you the article. So what did Jesus say before I get you the article? One more, one second. What did he say? You are my friends if you do what I command. If you obey me, you're my friends. No longer do I call you slaves. For the slave does not know what his master is doing. But I've called you friends for all things that I have heard from my father, I've made known to you. You understand? What prayer is supposed to be? Talking to your best friend. 
talking to your brother who loves you and talking to your father who adores you. So your attitude towards prayer must change, brethren. It's not just ritual or worship glorification. It's intimate communion. Once you have that attitude, you'll have a prayer life where you'll do the rosary or the Lord's Prayer, but it goes beyond that. Then you're going to have intimate communion where you talk to God from your heart. Okay, are, you, are you with me? I may have to just focus on this aspect because obviously the Holy Spirit is moving me in this direction so you can learn. Right? You understanding? If you have the attitude prayer is just ritual, then you won't have a very deep, profound intimacy with God. It is not just worship glorification and a form of spiritual discipline like saying the rosary or saying the Lord's Prayer. It's more. It has to be communion. God says, I'm your friend. You're my friend. I'm your best friend. I'm your brother. I'm your father. I want to hear your heart. So that means throughout the day, you got to tell him how you're feeling. Okay. In other words, Father, I'm sad. I'm hurting. Lord Jesus, please comfort me. I'm tired, Lord. Lord, I don't know how much more I can do this. Holy Spirit. Would you strengthen me? I need your embrace. Would you hug me? I'm hurting right now. And I'm that's that's how you're supposed to be. Did you know that? Talking to him. He sees what you're thinking. He knows your heart. But he wants you to go to him and verbalize it and say it. And I'm not just saying it to say it. That's how I talk with God. I'll be driving, I'll be talking to the Lord. I'll be sitting, I'll be talking to the Lord. I'll say, Lord, I'm tired, Lord. Ya ala yamshikha. Ya ala means, oh God, oh Jesus, oh Messiah. Chikhli, I'm tired. I'll say that. Chikhli, I'm tired. Lord, I'm tired. Lord, help me. And I say, Lord, I love you. I don't want to shame you, Lord. Lord, you know I don't want to fail you. I want to make you happy. And then sometimes when I'm sitting and I think about the goodness of the Lord, Start tearing up and saying, thank you, Lord. Thank you. You've been good to me, Lord. <clears throat> See, I'm, you talk to him because he's real. Talk to him from your heart. You've been good to me, Lord. You never left me, Lord. Even when I failed, you were there for me. Right? You need to talk to him. So what's prayer? Communication. What's prayer? Intimacy. What's prayer? Fellowship. Not just invocation. Supplication and glorification, right? You with me there? You understand now what prayer is? I want to give you a story that I heard. Cameron, is that you, Cameron? I don't know if it's uh, the sister. Good to see you, sister. God bless you. I want to give you a story that someone shared that moved me in my spirit. Now, be careful you don't take it to the extreme, but he's, and then when I think of the story, can I share two stories? They're not so much true as they are illustrations, okay? And then I'm going to show you why Jesus prayed. I'm still on topic, brethren. Maybe the Spirit just wants me to focus on this objection. I'm going to have to retitle it again. Remember what the goal of the sessions are. Holy Spirit, you teach. Holy Spirit, you took over. Let me be your mouthpiece. You set the agenda. That's why I'm, I don't have prepared notes. Let the Holy Spirit take over. And then if he changes the topic, his will be done, because that's what he wanted me to speak on. May he be glorified. And I'll change the topic. And you're still learning. Because the Holy Spirit wants us to learn this. All right. This is a story. It's not so much true as it's a parable to illustrate something. <clears throat> there was a young Christian man who was invited to go out with his friends. So his friends took him to downtown. And they were about to enter a nightclub. And he said, I can't go. I'll wait for you outside. When I heard the story, I started bawling. And I'll tell you two stories. Okay. <clears throat> he go, they told him, why can't you go inside? He goes, no, I can't. I don't want to hurt my friend. They go, what do you mean? He goes, you see, I have this friend who's the best friend in the world. <laughs> told you this story is going to get me emotional. He's never left me. He's always been there for me. He only wants the best for me. He's always been on my side. 
And my friend doesn't like these places. He doesn't like what he sees in these places. So my friend loves me enough that he doesn't leave me, but he'll be waiting outside for me. Now, obviously, Christ is omnipresent, but you get the point what he's trying to get at. He'll be waiting out here as I enter and leave and then start walking with me, but I can't do that to him. I can't do that to him. I love him too much because he's been good to me to leave him out here waiting for me because I know he doesn't like these places, but he loves me so much he'll wait for me <clears throat> to come out. I can't do that to my friend. I love him too much to hurt him. They asked him, who's your friend? Jesus Christ, my Lord. That's who my friend is. You understand the point of the story? This man had a relationship with the Lord. He walked with the Lord. And because he loved the Lord, he didn't want to go to places where he knew the Lord would be hurt. Right? So when I hear that story, whoosh, whoosh. It's a powerful story, right? The way he said it, right? He'll wait for me. He won't go inside. He won't go inside. He'll wait for me. But because of that, I won't leave him because he doesn't leave me. And I cannot imagine leaving him out here alone while I'm inside, knowing it hurts my friend. No, I love my friend too much. Now, I'll give you another story that I heard. Okay, so I'm going to give you another story that also moved me to tears. And by the way, these stories I heard in Baptist churches, believe it or not. I heard them in Baptist churches. Baptist preachers are some of the most amazing preachers. They got some amazing testimonies, man, the way they connect stuff. And I've heard it in evangelical churches as well. This one I heard in the Baptist church, and it was Pastor... Keith Gomez, Keith Gomez, Elgin, Illinois, Northwest Bible Baptist Church, independent, King James only, fundamentalist Baptist, diehard anti-Catholics. Powerful preacher, man. Powerful preaching. Man, these guys know how to preach. They know how to preach. And it was him. If I recall, it was him. There were so many great preachers and stories. May not have been him, but I, I recall it was him. So mm -hmm. before he begins the sermon, what they do is, before they begin the sermon, they may give you a parable illustration. And then when they finish the sermon, they'll come back. So he began the sermon by saying, there was this young composer who was doing an opera. Now, what's the most famous place in New York? If you make it big time, if you're this opera composer and if you make it big time you you go there because i don't know much about opera you know what i'm talking about it's in new york so he gave this illustration here's this opera composer he's a musical composer he's doing his first right symphony right you know how it is and he's doing it and right when he hits the high note right he pauses the people start clapping but he keeps looking up every time he hits the high note he keeps looking up and then he comes back and he smiles and he resumes. Okay. Keeps doing it. Then again, high note. Oh, crowd is applauding. He doesn't look at the crowd. Doesn't acknowledge the crowd. He's not concerned about the crowd. He keeps looking up. He's looking to his right, up to his right. And then he turns and he smiles. So I'm about to cry. Uh, so again, People erupting. He's ignoring the applause. He doesn't care for the applause of the people. Keeps looking up to see something up there. And every time he does, he smiles. So then the symphony finished. So people began wondering, why is it that instead of focusing on the applause of the crowd and take it in, he keeps looking up. And here's the story. Up to his right in the balcony, was sitting, the man, was sitting the man who had found him as an orphan, adopted him and raised him as a son and loved him and trained him and gave him hope. 
And he was there watching his son grown up <clears throat> performing his for, first symphony. And what mattered to the composer wasn't what the crowd thought, but whether this man who loved me, who took me in as an orphan, who gave me a hope and made me feel as a real son and gave me a family, whether he's happy because I want to make him happy for what he did for me and how much love he showed me. And what was the point? The pastor said, Son, when you preach, are you looking to the crowd for their applause? Or are you looking to Jesus? When you preach, when you teach, <clears throat> when you evangelize, do you look up to heaven and say, Lord, This make you happy? <clears throat> you happy, Lord? When you do it for the Lord, nothing else matters. That's why the story moves me, makes me cry. Right? So that was the illustration. The point is, when you preach, you're doing it for the crowds? May God purge our motives. Or are you doing it for him? So he was using that because God adopted us. The father adopted us. Jesus purchased us. So do we look up and say, Lord, did that please you? Lord, did that delight your heart? Did that make you happy? And sadly, I do fail a lot. But that's why at the end of the day, I don't care what people think of me. I really don't. I don't care what people think. I just don't want the Lord to be angry. And that's all that matters. So now you get the idea what prayer is, right? You understand what prayer is? Okay. So why did Jesus pray to the Father? Number one, are you ready now to impact this? Number one, if the Father is not the Son and the Son is not the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit is not the Father, and they are distinct persons who are perfect love. Why would you be shocked that the Father prays to the Son and the, and the Spirit, the Son prays to the Father and the Spirit, and the Spirit prays to the Father and the Son? Because prayer is intimate, personal, loving communion and fellowship. Would we, would we expect them to do otherwise? And you see it in the way Jesus prays. And you see it in the way he speaks to the Father. It is a love relationship. Watch here. Here, let me show you. A love relationship. If just read John 17, Jesus' prayer. This is not just worship. It's a loving discussion and dialogue where Jesus is revealing the heart of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and the way he's speaking to the Father, to the Father about us and himself. Here, let me show you. Look at his prayer. You're going to start crying again. I promise you, you're going to start crying. Watch here. You ready? Watch here. Oh, let me, I'm, I'm, I'm even thinking about it. I'm going to start crying. Here. Here, watch this prayer. Let me read it. John 17, 20 to 26. Watch the heart of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the way they speak to each other. Watch here. Okay. John 17, 20, 26. Look at how he speaks. Now, guys, Jesus is praying for the apostles and also praying for those who believe the message through them and also the world. Look at the heart of Jesus revealing the heart because Jesus' heart is the Father's heart, the Spirit's heart. Watch this. Fall in love with your God. Meditate and look how beautiful your God is. Look, look at these words. I promise you it's going to move you in your spirit in Jesus' name. It's not because I'm trying to manipulate you, no. If you have a heart tender for Jesus, this is going to move you. Look at his prayer. He's asking the Father. See, this is communication. I do not ask on behalf of these alone. Abba, I don't just ask for Peter, <clears throat> John, and James, and Thomas, but for those also <clears throat> who believe in me through their word. And you are their fruit. 2,000 years later, 
the apostles are still converting people because their message has been preserved in the scriptures and the church. So they are still bringing people to Christ through their word that we have in the Bible and in the churches, which the Spirit established through them. Now watch. I'm not just praying for them, Abba. I'm praying for everyone that will believe through their word, that they may all be one. This is the heart of our God. I want them to be one, even as you, Father, are in me and I in you. I want them to have this perfect, inseparable love and fellowship with one another that we have. I'm in union with you. You're in union with me. We're in union with the Spirit. Inseparable, perfect, loving fellowship. That's what I want for them. I want them to be that way as we are with one another. You and me, I and you, that they also may be in us, in perfect union with us, in fellowship with us. That's what I want for them, Abba. Ya yeah, Babi. That's what I want for them, Father. See the heart of our God? This is the heart of the Father, Jesus revealing, because the Father's heart is the Son's heart, the Spirit's heart. So that the world may believe that you sent me. So if they become perfectly united, then the world will know you sent me, and the world by knowing will believe and be saved. Now watch. Look at his love for us. Look how much he loves us. Please pay attention. Lori, everyone, carry, listen to how much our God who's real, he's real. Look how much he loves. And that's amazing. Man, dude, I'm a maggot. There are times I can't stand myself. And there are a lot of times I can't stand most of you, especially Linda Yeshua. But thank Jesus he's not me. Now watch. Look at this. The glory which you have given me, I have given to them. I have given them the glory. Look, there's no envy and jealousy. Jesus doesn't want to keep you a servant beneath his feet. Look at his heart. They're more than servants. They're more than servants. I don't want them just to be servants beneath my feet. They are my friends, Abba. Remember John 15, 12 to 15? They are my friends. They are your sons and daughters. They are my brothers. So I want my friends to be with me. I want my friends to celebrate with me. I want my friends to party with me because I love my friends and my friends love me. It's Jesus. Now watch this. Here's where you're really going to get moved. The glory which you have given me, I have given to them that they may be one just as we are. Now watch this verse. This verse, I and them and you and me. Now watch. Okay, watch. That they may be perfected in unity so that the world, brethren, listen to this, please, may know that you sent me and loved them even as you have loved me. Right there, that should move you to the floor in tears. You see what Jesus just said? He said, because I'm in all of you, my Father loves you just as much as he loves me. That should blow your mind away. Let's park on that one. Because 24 is also going to make you cry. Look at this. I want the world to know, Bobby, my father. I want the world to know that those who belong to me and I'm in them, you love and adore them just as much as me. See it? See that? That's the heart of our God. <clears throat> Jesus is saying, I love you so much. You're my friends. And my father adores and loves you just as much as he loves me because I'm in you and you're in me. And then watch this part, 24. 24 also kills me. 24 kills me. I'll tell you why it kills me. Watch. Here is what prayer is between Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Here's the verse. Father, this is Jesus. He prayed this prayer and he gets what he asked for. I desire that they also whom you have given me be with me where I am. 
I want my friends to be with me, Bobby. See, this is communication. This is intimate communion. This is intimate loving fellowship. Look what he says. <clears throat> I can imagine being in that upper room. I can imagine being in that upper room and hearing God, man, God Almighty, the eternal Son, Jesus, our Lord, in the flesh, praying these words. Because they were still in the upper room. This is not in the Garden of Gethsemane. After he prays, then they go. Kidron Valley. Hearing my Lord pray this for me. Pray this about me. And in praying, revealing the infinite love that the Father has for him and he for the Father, as well as the Spirit. And he says this. Look what he says. I desire that they also whom you have given me be with me where I am. Right? Be with me where I am. Watch here. Watch here. Watch the words. Why? Look at the Father's love for the Son. So that they may see my glory, which you have given me. Now, the last line, brethren. The last line. For you loved me before the foundation of the, of the world. That right there, move you. Jesus saying, from before the world was created, my father, my daddy, was in love with me, loving on me, flooding me in his love, and he's never stopped loving me from before the world, and he'll never stop loving me forever and ever. My daddy, Abba, is in love with me, and I'm in love with him. See that? This is what prayer is. You, my father, Abba. And in Aramaic, Abba means daddy. You, my father, Babi. See, that's why when my daughters call me Baba, my heart melts. When I hear my daughters call me Baba, I hear the echo of the voice of the Son of God saying to God, Baba, Babi, my Baba, my father, daddy. See? Now watch this. This is prayer. You see what prayer is? Now watch this. 25 and 26. Ooh, this, this one too. This one too right here. Look at this. Look how he talks to his father. Oh, righteous father. Man, those words kill me. Bentek, and your mother is the only Shia whore who got molested by the Shia. And that's why the Shia burn incense to your mother's picture. Now, don't be a dog like your prophet Muhammad. Piss me upon him. Come on, stream yard, so I can bury you with your dog Muhammad. Now, watch here. And I want to show you that your dog Muhammad said, you're Satan, Allah praise. Watch this here. Father, right? Watch here. Righteous father. These words, it's like it penetrates my heart because you see the love and reverence the son has for the father, the father has for the son. Righteous Father, although the world, now here, this one here, has not known you. The world does not know you, Bobby. Yet I have known you. I know you. The world doesn't know you. I know you. I've known you, and I know you, and will be. And see, knowing here means intimacy. That's what it means. And these have known that you sent me. And I've made your name known to them and will make it known so that what? I want to continue to make your character known to them so that the love with which you love me may be in them and I in them. I'm going to continue making you known to them so they can know your character, know your nature, know who you are, know what you're like, know that you're a God of infinite love and you are in love with them and you love them as much as you love me, the way you love, me, love them is the way you love me, the way you love me, is the way you love them, because I'm in them, in relationship with them, connected to them. You see that? But what's the condition, though? Christ has to be in you. See the condition? Christ has to be in relationship with you, in fellowship with you, 
in communion with you, you in fellowship with him, in communion with him, <clears throat> clinging to him, and this promise is yours. This is prayer, brethren. This is prayer. So change your attitude towards prayer. Change your attitude towards prayer. Prayer is not just worship glorification. It is. It's not just a form of spiritual discipline where you repeat specific prayers. It is. It's relationship. It's communion. It's speaking to him honestly because he sees what you're feeling. You think you're hiding. Speak. He wants you to say it. Say it. Lori, say it. You're angry with me. Lori, I know. Tell me. I see the anger in your heart because of what happened to your husband. You think I'm not aware? Say it. Tell me you're angry with me. My daughter, you don't know how much I'm in love with you. Tell me your pain. Come to me. I'm Abba. I'm your father. I know you're angry with me. You don't understand why he left. But I promise you, he's here with me by my side. And he eagerly awaits your reunion. That's prayer. Brethren, that's prayer. Tell God how you feel. You think you can hide it from him? Sorry, guys. I don't try to cry because I'm, you know, I have haters here going to think I'm putting on a show. I'm not. Lord, purge my motives. But that's what prayer is. Talk to him. God is more real than you can imagine. He is in love with you. Speak to him. Be realistic. You think when you're angry, he doesn't hear it? He doesn't see your pain. He doesn't see your anger. But I can tell you on God's word, I swear to you, and I'm going to show you, he cries with you. When you cry, he cries with you. <clears throat> when he sees his daughter or a son crying, he's crying for you, for your pain. And he's saying, precious daughter, you weep for a season. But I promise you, cling to me. Don't let go because I will wipe away the tears and you will never be sad again. You will never be sad again. Don't give up on me. I know you're hurting. My heart hurts for you. But I'm letting you know. I swear to you, as surely as I live, you will cry no more. You will cry no more. Trust and be patient. Here, let me show you. Okay? Yeah, I'm going to have to retitle this because we're in a different direction. Here, look at Jesus here. When he's about to raise Lazarus, John 11, 33, 35. Watch here. Watch here. Okay, watch. I'm not making it up. I'm giving you scripture. John 11, 33, 35. When Jesus therefore saw her crying because Lazarus had died, and the Jews who came with her also crying, he was deeply moved in spirit. And was troubled. You see, when he saw them crying, it says he was troubled in spirit. He felt anguish and pain in spirit, which I take to mean the divine nature, the God of infinite love was moved and was bothered by the pain and the crying and the sadness. And so then he says, where have you laid him? Get me to the tomb. Enough of this. Let me raise him. That's what he's saying, right? Now watch. They said to him, Lord, come and see. The shortest verse in the English Bible is John eleven thirty five. 35. In the English Bible, this is the shortest verse. Jesus wept. Jesus wept. Now, brethren, he just told Martha, I'm going to raise your brother from the tomb. And he goes on to do it. So Jesus knows he's about to raise Lazarus physically, summoning his spirit from Abraham's bosom to enter and raise him. He wasn't crying for Lazarus. Guess who he was crying for? Guess who he was crying for? Why was he crying? He knows Lazarus is going to come out of the tomb. He's not crying for him. He was crying for the people who are heartbroken. He saw what sin did 
Because of sin, it brought disease, decay, pain, misery, aging, and death, and heartache. And he saw the people weeping, and he wept for them. His heart broke. That means when he sees Kirileison, Tomas, Orthochristos, Lepanto, Cameron, Lori, Linda, all of you, when he sees you crying, he's crying with you. And he's telling you with the ears of faith and the eyes of faith, I swear to you, it will all be over sooner than you think. I promise you, you will cry no more. Just remain and endure and be faithful. No, he was, he was emotionally crying, not physically. If Jesus is in a glorified physical body of flesh and he has a human face, you think that even now with that human face of our God, tears don't come down from his eyes? Come on, Yeshua. Take it to our lover, buddy. You believe Jesus is in the flesh now. He's still a man with a physical body, a physical face. Come on now. Take it to higher level, dude. All right. Take it to higher level. The human face of Jesus <clears throat> exhibits the anguish and the tears that God sheds spiritually. Obviously, when I mean in a metaphorical sense. So Jesus puts a face to the tears of God. When God is anguished and heartbroken over you, Jesus puts a human face to it because now you see. Jesus, who is God as a man, that human face, human tears as a sign of his anguish for you. Come on, take it to higher level, dude. Don't keep it on milk. You want got it? Now that we know what prayer is, there's another reason why Jesus prayed. Can I give you the other reason? Marcy, and I'm including you too, Marcy, in this. There's another reason why Jesus prayed. Are you ready for the other reason? Then I'm going to turn the tables on Allah and Momo. There's another reason why Jesus prayed. You guys ready? Okay. He's also man. And Jesus became human became man in order to show you what the perfect human life looks like. He became human, he became man, and lived the life that God intends all humans to live. He's man as God intends man to be. The perfect human, the perfect woman, the perfect man is not an atheist. The perfect human, the perfect woman, the perfect man is not a hedonist is not self-centered, is not selfish, is not godless. The perfect human, the perfect man, the perfect human, the perfect man is the perfect worshiper of God. So if Jesus becomes man, as God intends man to be, then he would be that perfect human life that perfectly submits to God, his Father. Well, perfect submission also requires prayer and worship. So why would it shock you that Christ, the perfect man, living the perfect human life, exemplifying what the perfect human life is in the sight of God, because we're not atheists. We don't live in an atheist worldview. We live in a theistic world where there is a God and demands us to worship him. Why would that shock you? Uh-oh, Kate. Kate, you're scaring me now. Uh-oh, Kate. Kate wants to get married. She's propositioning Moe. Mo Ape, are you a Christian convert? God bless you. Hey, Mo, ain't you married? I'm sorry, Kate, Kate. I think he's married already. You sly Catholic girl, you. All right. You got it now? See, look. Curiosity killed the cat, Kate. Curiosity killed the cat, Kate. But satisfaction brought it back. All right, so now we understand. Now, as Christians who know your faith, Natasha and everyone, you now know how to answer that question, what prayer is? Yes, Father prays to the Son and the Spirit. Yes, 
Son prays to the Father and Spirit. Yes, the Spirit prays to the Father and Son because prayer is intimate communion and fellowship. And yes, Jesus is also man. He's the perfect human life. And the perfect human perfectly worships God since he's not the Father and he became man to serve the Father. He worships the Father perfectly. Everyone got the answer? Everyone got the answer? Chris is Bellator. Hold on, buddy. So now I can turn the tables? So I can turn the tables? Now I'll show you this objection destroys Islam and Judaism. This objection destroys Islam and Judaism. And here's my article. Did you know the rabbis say their God, who's not the God of the Old Testament, prays and worships? And that their God asks a rabbi to pray for him and bless him? <laughs> did you know that? I did a session on this. If you go to my ear, let me, oh, I can't show it. If you go to my YouTube channel, search and put Judaism, God, praise. I did a session on this. Did you know that? That Judaism says God prays and he worships and then asks the rabbi to pray for him, bless him. You think I'm lying, right? You all of you little faith. Here it is. Here's my article. The God of Judaism prays. Here it is. And now I'll show you that Allah prays. Here's the article. I ain't lying, man. <laughs> and there's, I'm going to read to you where God, supposedly God, asked a rabbi, Rabbi Ishmael, would you bless me, my son? Would you pray over me? And God bods his head and nods. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you. Yes, yes. That's in the Talmud. I'm not lying. That's in the Talmud. You think I'm lying? All right, here you go. Let me show you the article. And I want to put it on the screen. Man, th these religions, dude. And they have the audacity to make fun of us. People living in glass houses should be shutting their mouths. Tovia Swinger. Okay, here it is. Here it is. The God of Judaism prays. And I link to an older article on the same theme here. So here's the article, brethren. You have my full authorization. You can take my materials, take my sessions, clip them, translate them, upload them, but promise me to study them, understand them, and share them, and don't charge. It's for you. I'm, these are all for you, guys. All right, now let's look. Let's, let's see. Let's laugh. So I'm going to ask the Mohammedan, the Stolicker, hey, who does your God Allah pray to? He prays. If he's perfect, why does he pray? And who does he pray to? And hey, Tovia Swinger, who does your Hashem pray to? Your Hashem, who's not the God of the Old Testament. Jesus, by rejecting me, show you don't know who God is. Okay, now watch here. Shalom Chavarim. Yep, you. Go there, go to the Talmud and read in Hebrew. I'll put the Hebrew for you. Shalom Chavarim. Shalom Chavarim. Shalom Chavarim. Here you go, but here it is online, safaria.org, English translation. This is Barachoth, Barachot 7A. Barachot 7A, buddy. Here you go. Shalom. And I linked to it from my article, so let me show it to you so you don't think I'm lying. Thank God for the internet, all these free resources. All you do, you cheapos, is pay for internet, cheapos. Stop using your neighbor's internet. Shalom Chavarim, Shalom Chavarim, Shalom, Shalom. There it is. There's the link. There's the Hebrew and the English translation done by rabbinic Jews, not Christians. Shalom Chavarim. All right. Does Hashem pray? Let's see. It's in my article, so let's quote. Get ready to laugh. I'm not going to quote the Hebrew. I gave it to you, but here. You ready? Here you go. Let's laugh, guys. Shalom Havarim. Shalom Havarim. Shalom. Shalom. What happened here? All right. Let's try it again. What? Reject my comment, sucker. Rejecting my comment. Why? Hmm. YouTube is rejecting my comment? It won't even let me post. Do you believe it? 
All right, here you go. Shalom Chavarim. Shalom Chavarim. Along the same line, lines, Rabbi Yohanan, Yohanan said, in the name of Rabbi Yossi, Yosei, John Mahindo, you better call me on Skype or I'm going to block you. From where is it derived that the Holy One, listen, from where is it derived, where do you get that the Holy One, blessed be he, prays? You see it? Hey, where would you get that he prays from Isaiah 56, 7? Pay attention, brother. You're going to go and end up and you're going to enjoy this, even though I already did a session on this. Right? Where? As it is stated, I will bring them to my house, holy mountain, and make them joyful in the house of my prayer. Isaiah 56, 7. Now, the rabbis, like Jesus said, would parse every jot and tittle of the Old Testament. They would meticulously read so in deep every jot and tittle, right? And come up with these explanations because of the way the Hebrew text is written. They took Isaiah 56, 7 literally because the literal Hebrew says the house of my prayer, not my house of prayer. In your English translations, it will say my house of prayer. Literally, it's the house of my prayer. So then the rabbis say, oh, wait. So this is God's house where he prays? This is the house where God prays? You see, you see how literally they took it? They took the Hebrew super literal that the Hebrew says, the house of my prayer. Oh, Baruch Hashem. He lives in a house, and in that house he's praying. My prayer, where I pray in the house. Whereas the idea is, my house where people pray. That's the idea. But they took the Hebrew literally. The Hebrew literally says, the house of my prayer. Hey, Rabbi Shlomo. Yes, Rabbi Schneerson. The Hebrew says, the house of my prayer. Does that mean Hashem is in a house where he prays? So he's praying in that house because it's his prayer? It must be, Rabbi Schneerson. Baruch Hashem. See that? I'm not kidding. That's where they got that God prays from Isaiah 56, 7. Here, let me show you the, the uh, here, here, here it is, interlinear. These guys are funny, right? So, oh, our God prays then. Now, they even tell you what he prays. Watch. Shalom, Chavarim. Shalom, Chavarim. Shalom, Shalom. Here it is. Bible Hub interlinear. Here it is. I'm going to now show it on the screen. All right. You're going to see. It literally says the house of my prayer. That's the Hebrew. Shalom, Chavarim. Shalom, Chavarim. Shalom, Shalom. All right, here you go. You see it right here? There it is. You see the Hebrew? Where is it? You see it, right? To my prayer and house. See it? House of my prayer. My prayer in house. Right there. You see, I'm not making it up, and there's a link. Aren't you thankful to the Holy Spirit of the Father and Son for being pleased to give us such wisdom and knowledge? Who am I, honestly? No high school diploma, GED, no college, no seminary, no university, and the Holy Spirit, out of his own kindness and love that I don't deserve, because he loves you just as much as he loves me, he doesn't love me more than you, pleased to give me this wisdom, and through me, share it with you. You see how blessed we are? You don't get this stuff just anywhere, the stuff that you're getting. Right? Okay, now let's continue. Okay, so then what else do they say? Baruch Hashem, the house of my prayer. Okay. From here we see, from here we see that the Holy One, blessed be He, prays. See? This verse proves the Holy One prays. Now, th then ask a question. All right. Good question, by the way. Uh, ask your mother, because when she was doing muta with the Shia, they told her how Judas died, as 20 of them gangbanged her in the name of Allah and his dog, Muhammad. Okay. So ask your mother. She'll know. All right. Now, 
the Jamara asks, what does God pray? Good question, right? The Jamara asks, what does God pray? See it? What does God pray? Because now they're curious. Man, wait, God prays? He prays? No way. Now I don't know what he prays. Maybe I can pray his prayer. Okay, now watch. Watch what he prays. You ready? Okay, Rabbi Rav Zutra Bar Tovia said that Rav said, Rav said, watch here. Watch here. Shalom Kavarim. Rav Zutra Bar Tovia, Tovia said that Rav said, God says, now here's God's prayer, people. Laura, Lori, here's God's prayer. This is them. They're telling you here's what he prays. May it be my will. May it be my will that my mercy will overcome my anger towards Israel for their transgressions. And may my mercy prevail over my other attributes through which Israel is punished. And may I conduct myself toward my children, Israel, with the attribute of mercy. And may I enter before them beyond the letter of the law. So God has to remind himself, self, yes, yeah, self, self. Be merciful to Israel, self. Okay, self. Don't act in the attribute of justice, self. So you don't consume Israel, self. All right, self. I'll do what you tell me. Okay, self. Yes, self. Act in mercy towards them. Okay, self. I'll do that, self. Well, thank you, self. And thank me. Thank you for reminding me, self. This is Judaism for you. And I want to show you with Allah. And yet they have the audacity, these demons like Tovia Singer, that fat slob, and Uthman, that fat cow, Sheikh Porky, to make fun of the Trinity and Jesus praying when their fake gods pray and they're praying to themselves. It's their God who prays to, them, to, prays to himself. Oh, but now it gets even worse. Watch here. Guys, watch the blasphemy. Watch the blasphemy. It goes on to say, Similarly, it was taught in a baraita, 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 that Rabbi Ishmael, hmm, Ishmael, that the Muslims claim is their father, but this is not him. This is a rabbi named Ishmael. Ben Elisha, the high priest, said, Once on Yom Kippur, I entered the innermost sanctum, the Holy of Holies. Well, at this time, there was no temple on earth. The temple was destroyed. So this delusional rabbi is claiming that he was transported into the heavenly tabernacle because remember when this is written the temple is destroyed so he's not talking about the earthly one he's saying that somehow he was transported into heaven only in his dreams and in heaven he went into the heavenly most holy place on the day of atonement i entered the innermost sanctum the holy of holies to offer incense now and in a vision i saw akatriil akatriil means the crown of God, Yah, Yahweh of hosts. Three names. Akatriil, Akatri, Akatir means crown. The crown of Il, God. So I saw the crown of God, Yah, Yahweh of hosts. In other words, he saw God. One of the names of God, expressing his ultimate authority, seated upon a high and exalted throne. Okay, so he sees God. Now watch here. Look what God says to him. Watch here. Are you guys enjoying this or it's like boring you to pits? Okay. And he said to me, Yishmael, my son, bless me. This is the God of Judaism telling a rabbi, Oh, Rabbi Ishmael, bless me. Can you pray for me, please? I need prayer. Pray for me, please. Talk about communion on saints on steroids. This is the Jewish version of communion on saints where a rabbi in heaven is praying for God, not for people on earth, praying for God. So God himself needs communion of saints. <laughs> God himself saying, yeah, I'm a believer in communion of saints, Sam, meaning Hashem. I'm a believer in communion of saints because I need rabbis to pray for me. Will you pray for me? Okay, so now watch. He said to, to me, Ishmael, my son, bless me. 
I said to him the prayer that God prays. So I simply repeated God's prayer back to him. All right, God, I'll pray your prayer that you pray to yourself. May it be. May it be. I'm sorry, man. I'm trying not to laugh. May it be your mercy, your will, that your mercy overcome your anger. And may your mercy prevail over your other attributes. <clears throat> and may you act toward your children with the attribute of mercy. And may you enter before them beyond the letter of the law. Now watch here. What does God say? What does God say? Look at this. So does God say, what are you doing praying to me? Now I give you two English translations by Jews of this source. But for the sake of time, we'll end it with this. Watch here. Look at this. Look what God says. The Holy One, blessed be, not in his head. Not in his head. Oh, yes. In other words, imagine Hashem as the rabbis repeating, okay, God, I'm going to pray your prayer back to you. The prayer you pray to yourself, I'll pray it back to you. And as he's praying, God is saying, imagine. This is the, the Talmud, right? Safariah.org. Berachot, right? 7 eight. Yes. Oh, yes, Ishmael. Oh, yes. Mm. Can I get an amen, Ishmael? Can I get an amen? Can I get an amen? Nodded his head and accepted the blessing. Now watch what this teaches you. Watch what this teaches you, dude. This even teaches us that you should not take the blessing of an ordinary person lightly. Don't be so arrogant as to ignore the prayer of anyone, even someone of a lower status than you. Look, God Almighty, Hashem, who has the highest status, even allowed some creature infinitely less than him to pray for him. How much more should you be humble and let Linda Yeshua pray for you? How much more should you be humble, Chris, can you raise let full armor apologetics pray for you? Just because they're not on your status, they're beneath you. Don't be so arrogant, Natasha. That's the lesson you're supposed to learn. This even teaches us that you should not take the blessing of an ordinary person lightly. If God asked for and accepted, accepted what? A blessing, um, uh, accepted a man's blessing, all the more so that a man must value the blessing of another man. See, that's a moral lesson, folks. Now, what about Allah? Does he pray like Hashem? No wonder that fat cow, Tovia Singer, is in bed with Sheikh Porky Pig, Ketchup Boy, Uthman Ibn Farooq, where they pat each other saying they worship the same God because their God is a schizophrenic, false God who prays to himself. Here, let me show you. And then we're going to open up the q and I'm going to change the theme. Poor Matt Slick. He's getting a break from getting slaughtered. You loving that truth? So truth, don't be so arrogant as to not allow me to pray for you. And don't be so arrogant that you think you're better than me because you make more money and better looking. Because even Hashem accepted the prayer of a creature who's infinitely less than him. Be humble, girlfriend. Be humble. All right? Now watch. What about Allah? Let me get you the article again. And I'll show it to you on the screen. Save this article and use the article at the bottom. All right, Anila? You're not better than Mr. Han, Anila, just because, you know, you think that, hey, I'm pretty and, you know, I'm, I'm godly. Mr. Hannah, how dare you pray for me? So here's the article. Bring them on. Tell Sakari, I'll make them Kari. Kari means rice. And I'll make them Khari. Khari, my language, means my crap. So tell Sakari, I'll make them Kari and Khari. I'll make them rice and make them my crap. Let them come. All right, anyway. Now focus, Godson. Now, again, here's the article. You know, Kari rice, Kari. And my language, Khari, means my crap. But it's the graphic way of saying it. Okay, now watch here. All right, let's go here. Let me show you the article again. Sam, I don't see Jesus in you, Sam. Where's the love of Jesus? I don't see love of Jesus in you, Sam. Here it is. Here's the article. And in it, you're going to see the verses where Allah prays. And then go to the articles at the bottom. Here it is. You see? 2157. Allah prays. Chapter 2, verse 157. So I give you the verses, hadith, in the article. So use it. Here's the article. And let me post it. And I'll pin it in the description box. Bam. I don't see Jesus in you, Sam. 
Where's the love of Jesus? How come I don't see Jesus in Sam? Can I do my southern, southerner preaching voice? Yeah, Yotori, we're going to send you directly out of here for asking a stupid question that I've answered five million times because you're a fake. Okay, can I do it? Can I do the southern voice before we get into it? And then we have Q&A, guys. And we'll change the title and the theme. Can I do it, guys? You guys mind? I want to sound like, because this is how they preach. I'm not lying. One of their one of their favorite songs was one of my favorite songs was Brother Smith, do you love Jesus? Brother John, I love Jesus. Brother Smith, do you love Jesus? Brother John, I love Jesus. How much you love Jesus? I love him, Jesus, because he first loved me. Can I get an amen? Come on, Sister Stephanie. Hey, Sister Ruth, can I get an amen? Yeah, Brother John, preach it, Brother John, preach. All right, Brother Timothy, yeah. What about you, Brother Rodison? Do you love Jesus? Yes, I love Jesus. How about you love Jesus? I love Jesus because he first loved me. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I... It's an actual song, by the way. I'm not lying. Because he first... Hey, can I sing it to Butch? Hold on. Let me sing it to Butch. You guys don't mind, right? You, you know, we got all night. It's a weekend. I'm a loser. I'm all alone. My kids are in another state. Right? And I'm going to sleep alone, wake up alone. So let me sing to Butch. What's up, Answering Adventism? Anytime you want to do a session, I'm here, buddy. All right, here. Let me sing to Butch. Now, my neighbor's going to think I'm crazy. Okay? Yeah, exactly. Bible, Bible student, King James Version. You know, you know it. Okay, let's sing. Brother Butch, do you love Jesus? Also, you said you love Jesus. How about you love Jesus? Oh, he says he loves him a lot. Why do you love Jesus? Because he first loved Butch. Oh, Butch loves Jesus. Oh, Butch loves Jesus. Oh, Butch loves Jesus. Because he first loved Butch. Can I get any man, Butch? Yeah, preach it, preach it. Thank you, Butch, for singing. I'm most welcome. Thank you. Appreciate you. You remind me of a Rogers Park Jew when I was in Rogers Park, too. Right? All right. Now, let's get to Allah. I'm starting to lose it, man. Whew. Guys, can someone pray for me? I need deliverance, man. That's what happens when you're by yourself. You start imagining things. That's what happens when you're all by yourself. You got no one to share life with except that kitty cat. All right. Okay, let's go to the article. Because he first loved me. Oh, how I love Jesus. Allah praise. Here you go. Oh, how I love Jesus. Here you go. Yeah. Chapter 2, verse 157. Yep, right after this, we're doing Q&A, Fisher. So right after this, I'll tell you when you guys can call in. We have someone already. <clears throat> Here it is. Does Allah pray? You better believe it. Go watch all the sessions I've done and refutations to the Muslims in the articles. Right? Okay. Don't hate Dale. Man, what a hater, dude. Dude, Dale, what a hater, bro. Why are you such a hater, bro? You know I sing like the angels. A fallen one. <laughs> a fallen one. You get it? I say like an angel's fallen one. <laughs> All right. Upon them, upon those who are devout, upon those who are devout, rest the prayers and mercy from their Lord. So upon the devout Muslims, Allah prays for them and shows them mercy. Salawatun. Min Rabbihim wa Rahmatun. Salawatun. Salawat. Prayers. So upon these devout Muslims, their Lord Allah prays for them, sends prayers on them, and His mercy. So Allah prays. Who does Allah pray to? I don't know. That's something too hard for me to figure out. You know, I don't know. All right, here, here is Hilali Khan of 2157. 
Here it is. You don't bring me flowers. 2157, another translation. They are on those on whom are the salawat. And don't let them deceive you. Salawat doesn't mean blessings. The Arabic word for blessing is, is barakat. Baraka, barakat. This is salawat, meaning prayers. Yeah, it's all prayers. So they transliterate the Arabic, salawat. I who are blessed and will be forgiven from their Lord and who receive mercy. And it is they who are the guided ones. Okay. Two more verses in the Quran where Allah prays and then some hadith. Now this one is really funny. This one is really funny. Here you go. And this comes from the Palmer translation, Edward Palmer, who gives you a note on this word, Salah. Okay, watch here. Chapter 33, verse 43. He it is who prays, you salli. He it is who prays for you and his angels too. Now, did you catch it? Allah, Salah. The word, the word verb is Salah. And the angels also do Salah. So Allah and the angels are performing Salah for Muslims. Now watch here, guys. Watch here. What does Allah pray when he prays for believers? What are the angels praying when they pray for believers? Here it is. He, Allah, prays for you and the angels too to bring you forth out of the darkness into the light for he is merciful to the believers. Say what? You know, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, but wait, wait, wait. Allah has to pray to himself to tell himself to take people out of darkness into the light. Now, I understand angels saying, Ya Allah, Allahumma, take him out of darkness into light. But why is Allah saying, Allahumma, Allah, Ya Allah, take them out of darkness into light. Okay, Allah, thank you for praying to me, Allah. And thank you for reminding me, Allah, to take them out of darkness into light. You're welcome, Allah. Does Allah love Jibreel? Allah loves Jibreel. How much does he love Jibreel? Oh, he loves him so much. Okay. Now watch Palmer's footnote to the word Salah. Okay. What does Salah mean? Here it goes. Here's his footnote. Look what he admits. And then I'm going to give you one more verse and a hadith and then Q&A. Okay. His footnote. The same pass, the same word, Salah, same word, Salah, is used as is rendered pray in all the other passages in the Quran. Did you catch it? He's admitting to you the word Salah, wherever it appears in the Quran, means pray. But in these two verses, 33, 43, 33, 56, they mistranslate it because it's now Allah praying. So here, Palmer's telling you, Wherever the word salah appears, it always means prayer, without exception. So why are you Muslims lying to us when in 33.43 and 33.56, which I'm about to show you, where Allah performs salah, prayer, you mistranslate it. When every time the word appears, it means pray. So why did you change it for Allah? Because they're deceivers. They're liars like their father, the devil, Muhammad's God. The same passage... The same word is used as is rendered pray in all the other passages of the Quran, though the commentators interpret it here as meaning bless. Well, the word for bless is baraka. So too in the formula, because you hear Muslims saying this. So too in the formula, right? Which is always used of, of Muhammad's name, after Muhammad's name, as Holy Spirit gives me clarity of speech. Whenever the Muslims mention Muhammad's name in Arabic, they say this. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Which they will tell you, may God bless and preserve him, is literally, this is why I love this man, he was a Christian who tried to protect Christians from the Quran, so he translated the Quran accurately, even though it's a very old translation. Literally, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam means what? May God pray for him and salute him. Bow! What? Now let's look at the other chronic verse where Allah prays, and then I'm going to give you a hadith, and we're done. We're done. Here you go. 
And then Q&A, brethren, on any topic on the Trinity. But if I don't know who you are, you're going to have to go through Skype. 3356, verily, watch here, Palmer. And those who know Arabic will confirm. Am I lying, guys? You salli, you saluna, salawat, you Christians who speak Arabic. Am I lying? This is Ed, Edward Palmer's translation, Lori. The Palmer translation, which you can read online for free. Okay? Verily, God and his angels pray. You saloon, you saluna. Notice it's two groups doing it. Allah and the angels together are performing this action. So you ask the Muslim, when the angels, you saluna, what are they doing? Oh, they're praying. So when the angels do salah, they're praying? Yeah. Who are they praying to? Allah. Burial, because it says Allah has joined the angels. Allah joins the angels in praying together with them. So if salah means angels pray, why do you say that it doesn't mean pray when Allah is performing the same action with the angels? He's doing it with them. And you're admitting when they do it, it's prayer. Oh, because you see, it's a miracle of the Quran. The Quran has multiple meanings, third, and you don't know it. And then to make it worse, notice this. Verily, God and his angels pray, you saluna, for the prophet. Oh, you who believe, pray, salu, you pray for him, and salute him with a salutation. Now, this is where you really bury them. Same verb, salah. Believers are said, pray, salu for Muhammad. And why? Here's why. The verse is inciting Muslims to pray for Muhammad. Why? Look, even Allah, your Allah, and the angels are praying for Muhammad. If even Allah is praying for your Muhammad, and the angels are praying for your Muhammad, how much should you be praying for Muhammad? If Allah himself is joining angels to pray for Muhammad, you see how important Muhammad is? You got to be praying for him too. No, but they don't worship Muhammad. No, no. The verse is basically telling you Muhammad is the very focus of heaven. That Allah and the angels are busying themselves praying for Muhammad. That's why you should be praying for him. If Allah the mighty is praying and angels are praying, how much more should you be praying? No, oh, but we don't, we don't worship Muhammad. No, we don't worship him. No, we're, 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 we're monotheists. Though we look at black stone. That's going to come to life on the day of resurrection with two hands and a tongue and intercede for us. Though we smooch a black stone like Muhammad did, that turned black even though it's white because it absorbs our sins, right? Erases our sins. We're, we're, we're monotheists. We're money theists. Oh, that's what it is. See, darn you guys. They're not monotheists. They're money theists. What's wrong with you? Money theists, losers. All this time, you've been misunderstanding them. They're not monotheists. They're money theists. It's all about the money. What's wrong with you? Yeah, bro. Yep. So now, the hadith. Here's the hadith. A sound narration attributed to Muhammad. Here you go. Do the hadith say, Allah prays. Abu Umama, the father of Yomama. Okay, guys, Abu means the father of. Abu Umama, you can translate as the father of Yomama. The father of Yomama reported that the Messenger of Allah said, now watch how many people pray. It's the verb Salah, how many are doing it? The father of Yomama reported that the Messenger of Allah said, Allah and his angels and the people of the heavens and the earth even the ants and the rocks and the fish pray for blessings on those who teach people good. At Tirmidhi, Riyadh Salihin, the Meadows of the Righteous, Book of Knowledge, 241 chapter, The Excellence of Knowledge. So you see, would any Muslim deny the angels praying for those who teach? No. Would any angels deny that Muslims and the righteous beings in the heavens are supposed to pray for those who teach good? No. But now here's where it gets weird. Muhammad is so whacked, he thinks ants pray and fish pray. Now, don't be shocked that Muhammad, being mentally deranged and demonized, cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, 
believes that ants, fish, and stone, and trees speak and pray because it's in the Quran. If you read chapter 27, 13 on, Solomon has an army of insects and animals. And it says, as Solomon was walking, the ants stopped and saluted Solomon and started speaking to Solomon, and Solomon started speaking to them. Ya Suleiman, salami alikum. And Suleiman says, alikum salami too. Good to see you, ant. Good to see you, Shlomo. How you been? Ah, we've been, you know, busy. You know, it's 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 the season where we got to, you know, store food. You know how it is with us ants. Ah, 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 ah. I feel your pain. I know what. But salami alikum, I got to go. Alikum salami too. That's in chapter 27 of the Quran. Ants speak to Sol Solomon and Solomon speaks to ants. I'm not lying. It's there. And then Solomon is really upset. Solomon's really upset. You know why? The hoopoe bird. The hoopoe bird is missing. So the chap says, where's that darn hoopoe bird? Damn it. I'm going to kill him. And he shows up. I'm here. I'm here. Where you been, dude? Oh, I, I was spying on the queen of Sheba. There's a people that have a queen that leads them and they worship the sun. Are you kidding me? No, that's what. That's why I wasn't here in time. Don't hurt me. Me, 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 me. And this is the religion of Allah. And Allah is supposed to be God. So now let's turn the argument against these Mohammedan stone-licking pagans. If prayer means you're imperfect, then how can your God, Allah, pray if he's perfect and who is he praying to? But it gets worse. Let's wrap it up with this in Q&A. It gets worse. Okay. How worse does it get? Let me give you one final one. And then I'm going to show you how worse it gets. You know, the Muslims pray, right, in chapter 1, verse 6, guide us on the straight path, Surat al-Mustaqeem. Guide us on the straight path. But let me give you another hadith from Riyadh Salihin. 1397, Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As. Now remember, Abu Yumama meant the father Yumama. Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As means Abdullah ibn Amr, the son of the ass. El, the definite article, the ass, a specific ass. So Abdullah ibn Amr, the son of the ass, reported that, reported Messenger of Allah says, anyone who says a prayer on me, Allah will pray on him 10 times on account of it. So you get... Ten times the amount of prayers from Allah if you pray for Muhammad. No, it's not about Muhammad. No, Islam is not Muhammadanism. Look, Muhammad says, if you pray on me, Allah will pray on you ten times. What a deal. Pray on me. And every prayer, Allah will pray on you ten times. So you get ten times the amount of prayers from Allah on you when you pray on me. And this comes from Abdullah ibn Amr, the son of the ass. But now watch this, guys. And Q&A. Guys, come join Q&A. I got one. If not, we'll wrap it up. We already got one here. And I'll retitle this. Ahmad B. Dot Anish, you know, to reflect. Watch this, guys. You ready? Watch this. Chapter 1, verse 6 of the Quran and 1156. Chapter 1, verse 6. And there are five daily prayers. The Muslims must recite these seven verses of chapter 1, Surah Al-Fatiha. And they pray to Allah, and they ask Allah, guide us to the straight path. Sirat al-Mustaqeem. Allah, guide us to the straight path. Now, guys, watch this. Watch this, guys. Chapter 11, verse 56. Guys, Muslims pray to Allah. Surat al-Fatiha, chapter 1, seven verses, and all five prayers, or their prayers invalid. And in that prayer, they're saying, guide us to the straight path. Well, guess what, guys? 1156. Chapter 11, verse 56. Pay attention and we're done. Pay attention. Pay attention. Let's see if you catch it. I put my trust in Allah, my Lord and your Lord. There is not a moving living creature, but he has grasp of its forelock. Verily, my Lord is on the straight path. My Lord, Allah... He's on the straight path with us. So Allah, guide us on the straight path. So we're on the straight path with you because you're on the straight path with us. So all of us with you, Allah, are on a straight path to hell. How can God be on the straight path? 
How can you say your God is on the straight path when he is the one who is guiding you on the path to him? So Allah is on a path to himself. So Allah has to be on the straight path because he has to follow the path to himself so they can ask himself to do things. There it is. My Lord is on the straight path. All right, we got questions. We're done. We're done, folks. And now Q&A. So join me if you want. And ask questions on any topic. If I know you, you can come on stream or not. You got to do Skype. So here we got a customer. Can I help you, Christa, Christus Bellator? Oh, um, yeah, it was about uh, First Chronicles 17.13. Oh, yeah, yeah, good. You're back, brother. Yep. You're finally back. All right. Do you have your Bible this time? Yes, sir. Fisher, you know how many sessions I did on Matthew 15, 26, 27, and Mark 7, 24, 30? And I have an article on it. Fisher, go find the answer or come on my Skype to answer you if you're sincere. That actually shows that Jesus is God and a God of compassion and Muhammad is a dog under his feet. But you wouldn't know that because you don't know the Bible. But come and I'll answer for you. All right, so now, repeat your question. You're dealing with who? Now, every uh, in, if you don't come on my Skype, even and I don't know who you are, I'm going to have to send you on your merry way to pass the test. All right, now, repeat the objection so people know what I'm answering. Okay, so the Protestants said that the son wasn't always the son, but that he became the son during the time of um, his birth. And so one of the verses he used to bring up was First Chronicles 17, verse 13, which is also a Unitarian argument. All right, so you hear the argument? You have Protestants who say that Jesus wasn't the son. He became the son because 1 Chronicles 17, 13 is talking about Jesus. And there it says, I will be a father to him. He'll be a son to me. And I'll open up 1 Chronicles 17, 13. Get your Bible ready. Let's go through this. Okay. Ready? Yep. Okay. When you get there, read it. Okay. It says, I will be his f father and he shall be my son. And I will not take my mercy away from him as I took it from him who was before you. Okay. Now, let's see what the context is. Go to First Chronicles 22, 7 to 10. First, First Chronicles. Verses 7 to 10. Okay. Okay. Now read it. Now, guys. What does it mean that Jesus became the Son of God? I thought he's always been the Son of God. Yeah, it just tells you your, your buddy doesn't know how to read. He's as stupid as Muhammad. Okay. Uh, first Can Chronicles, Chronicles chapter 22, 7 through 10, 7 right? 7 to 10. Okay. Go ahead. It says, And David said to Solomon, My son, as for me, it was in my mind to build a house to the name of the Lord, my God. But the word of the Lord came to me, saying, You have shed much blood and have made great wars. You shall not build a house for my name because you have shed much blood on earth in my sight. Behold, a son shall be born to you who shall be a man of rest. And I will give him rest for all his enemies around all around. His name shall be Solomon, for I will give peace and quietness to Israel in his days. He shall build a house for my name and he shall be my son and I will be his father. And I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. Okay, so Solomon is the one chosen to sit on David's throne and to build God a house, right? Yes. And then when he sits on the throne, that's when he'll become God's son? Uh, I will yep. be father to him. He'll be a son to me, right? Yep. When? When he sits on the throne to rule, right? Yeah. Now go to same book, First Chronicles twenty eight, read three to seven. Twenty eight, okay. Three to seven. It guys, says, are you following me, guys, you're listening, you're learning. They use it to show that Jesus hasn't always been the Son of God, which shows they're stupid. Go ahead. Says, but God said to me, "You shall not build a house for my name, because you have, 
been made a man of war and have shed blood. However, the Lord. Again. So he yeah. was saying, see, the reason why God did not allow me to build a house, I killed too many people, which didn't please God. So go ahead. However, the Lord God of Israel chose me above all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever. For he has chosen Judah to be the ruler and of the house of Judah, the house of my father and among the sons of my father. He was pleased with me to make me king over Israel, over all Israel. Sorry. And of all my sons, for the Lord has given me many sons. He has chosen my son Solomon to sit on the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. Sit now, on he, the throne of the kingdom. He's going to sit and become king when David dies. Keep going. Yep. Now he said to me, it is your son Solomon who shall build my house and my courts for... I have chosen him to be my son, and I will be his father. Moreover, I will establish his kingdom forever if he is steadfast to observe my commandments and my judgment, judgments as it is this day. Did you read all the way to seven, sir? Yeah, that's to seven. Okay, now, do you understand who the son is that sits on David's throne and built God a house? It's Solomon, right? Yeah. And then God says... When Solomon sits on the throne, I will be his father. He'll be my son, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So understand what kind of sonship this is talking about, correct? Yeah. It's talking about being the royal son of God, the anointed son of God, anointed to sit on the throne of David on earth on God's behalf. And on the day that you sit on it, you become God's son, where as your father, he watches over you and fights your enemies. This is that kind of sonship, right? Yes. But are you aware that before Solomon became that kind of son, as part of the nation of Israel being circumcised on eighth day, he was already God's son. Did you know that? No. Because I, what I did Exodus 4.22 say, Israel is my firstborn son. Oh, yeah, that's correct. And Deuteronomy 14.1, what does it say to the Israelites? You are the sons and daughters of the living God, right? Mm-hmm. So when Solomon was born and circumcised, wasn't he already the son of God in that sense? Yes. But then he becomes God's son in a different sense, right? Yep. So Through he's the, the son of God as an Israelite born to the covenant community because the nation is God's son, the nation he works through to manifest his rule and bring nations to the God of Israel. But then he becomes the royal king the heir to David's throne, sitting on the throne on behalf of David. And in that sense, he becomes the royal son of God. So he becomes God's son in two senses. He's already the son of God by being an Israelite, born to the covenant community, circumcised in eighth day, because the nation is God's son. Then he becomes a different kind of son of God later. Just like Jesus, he's already the son of God in one sense. He's the eternal son of God, who's been the son with the father before creation. But then later, after he becomes flesh, born of Mary and a son of David, he becomes a different kind of son of God, the royal son of God. Are you with me? Yes. Okay. Now to break it down, royal son of God means you are a physical son of David, chosen to be the heir to sit on the throne for David. If you're not a son of David, you can't be that son of God. And if you're a son of David and you don't sit on the throne, you can't be that son of God. The royal son of God has to be a descendant of David who sits on the throne on behalf of David, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so now, before Jesus became flesh, listen carefully because you're going to get it. Before mm -hmm. Jesus became flesh, as God, he's spirit. Was he the royal son of God? In the sense no. I just articulated. No, Jesus was not, not the royal son of God yet. Why? Because to be the, that kind of son of God, you must first be what? Be born you know, like an Israelite through the line of David. So only when he was born of the Virgin Mary did he become a son of David, right? Yes. Then he qualifies to be that kind of son of God. Now, now why do you think Gabriel tells Mary the following? Go to Luke 1, read 30 to 33. And then I'm going to show you Luke. Hebrews, Hebrews, by the grace of God. Okay. It says, then the angel said to her, do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And behold, 
you will conceive in your room and bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign oh, over the... Yeah. When did David become his father? When he, when he, Mary was going to give him birth conceive to him. Conceive him, you see? Yeah, conceive and him. the Lord yes. God will give him the throne of his father, David. We'll give him. Mm. You caught it? Yes, nice. Now he qualifies to inherit the throne of David. Because David has become his ancestor, right? Yes. Now read, reread Luke 1, 32, 33. Reread it, and then I'm going to show you Hebrews, and that's the answer to this clown. Okay. He will be great and will be called the son of the highest, and the Lord God will give him the throne of his father, David. And he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. So you caught it, right? Only yes. after the Blessed Virgin, the Holy Virgin, the Theotokos, can seize him, he becomes a son of David, and he can inherit the throne of his father David, right? Yes. But when did Jesus actually begin ruling as a son of David? When did that happen? Um, I, I would assume after his resurrection. You got it. Because when he okay. rose from the dead, where did he ascend? To heaven. To do what? To, um, to establish, you know, to be the ruler, the king. What is he doing? Where is he? Is he standing or sitting? Come on. No, sitting at the right hand. Ah, uh, so he went to heaven and began sitting on the throne. That's yes. the day in which he now inherits the throne for David. But when do the sons of David become God's sons in the royal sense? When they are born of in the line of David as an Israelite. But that's not enough. David had many sons. What else? To. Come on. Come on. I have opened you. <laughs> it was. Uh, come on. David had um, many sons. Not all of them became royal sons. What's the second qualifier? Come on, dude. Don't don't disappoint me. I'm going to have to hurt Butch. <laughs> all right. It was because I'm having a brain fart. All right. Uh, well, hey, you better You better make sure it's not smelly. Okay. All right. Um, repeat what I said to you and recall it. Because if you can't recall, then you can't use it. All right. Wow. Well, yeah. Um, when did the sons of David become the royal son of God? When being conceived through Mary. Right. Okay. Let's try this again. When did the sons of David become the royal sons of God? Sons of David. Solomon, Hezekiah, come on, brother. You were doing good and you dropped the ball. Uh, come on. Don't hurt me because I want to start blocking everybody for All your right. sense. When did uh, Solomon become the royal son of God? He became the royal son of God when he was enthroned. See, why are you scared, bro? Damn, bro. It's like, man, that <laughs> fart just stunk up the place. Okay, yeah. so when do the sons of David become the royal sons of God? When they are enthroned, right? When they wow. live in the throne. So when did Jesus become enthroned? After his resurrection, uh, ascension to heaven. So when he sits on the throne in heaven as a son of David, is that the time when he becomes that kind of son of God? Yes. Exactly. And that's what Hebrews 1 said. Go to Hebrews 1, read 3 to 5. That's exactly why it says, I will be your father. Because he's talking about a different kind of sonship. Hebrews. You get it? Yep. So go Hebrews, Hebrews 1. 1 5, read it. So your, bo your boy doesn't know the Bible any more than Muhammad knows the Quran. All right. Hebrews 1, 3 to 5. 3 to 5. Okay, gotcha. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty. Oh, on so high. after he died on the cross and purged our sins, then he sat down on the right hand of the majesty on high. Yep. And that's when he becomes the following. So he sat at the right hand of the majesty on, and then what? 
having become so much better than the angels, as he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than no, they. they. Now, let me explain what it means. He okay. became better than them in position, and he ob obtained greater authority than them, because name here means authority and position. He mm -hmm. became better than them and greater than them in authority, because on earth he was in the status of a slave. And so now he went higher than the angels, because for a season he was lower than them in status. So he inherited mm -hmm. a name, meaning authority. And then Hebrews quotes, First Chronicles 17, 13, and Psalm 2, 7. Now read it, 4 and 5. And so, we're going to be wrapping up after this next question. For to which of the angels did he ever say, You are my son. Today I have begotten you. So when did he beget him? At the day of his enthronement. You got it. It has nothing to do with Christ's deity, his divine sonship, which he's always had. It has to do with his divinic, Davidic sonship, the Davidic son of God, the royal son of God. And then the second quote. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And end of story. That's that first that's first Chronicles 17 13. End of story. Okay. You see now how awesome. he got refuted? Yes. Now go school that punk. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Sam. Okay, God bless you, buddy. Okay, we got one question here. It's a uh, Bible student, King James. What's up, buddy? Hey Sam, could you could you hear me? Yes, I can, sir. Nice to meet you. I just want to tell you I appreciate all the work you do for the glory of God. I thank the Lord for you. I thank God for you, man. You're you're an exception because usually King James only Baptists, they thank everyone else. They're right. out of the especially those heading towards the Orthodoxy Catholic, but you're a little more open minded. So God bless you. I appreciate it. So I we have a person here. I live in Nevada. We got a person here in Nevada. Hey. That's uh it's part you of, and me. Okay. He's Lord part willing. of the, he's part oh, of the Go yeah, on. I can, I can yeah, hear don't you. Don't get too excited, dude. June 15th to the 20th, I want to be in your area. Just to let awesome. you know. Got awesome. Is awesome. so, there someone hard of hearing? Yeah, what happened? June 15th, you said? Yeah, June 15th to the 18th. I'll be there around the 16th. I'm visiting. Awesome. Are, are you doing some kind of event or something? We can well, meet I'm up? I'm just visiting because I'm bored. I'm a loser. I got no life. So I decided to visit for a couple of days because it's Father's Day weekend. So I'm going to celebrate Father. I'm going to do what Allah and Hashem do. I'm going to celebrate my own Father's Day with myself. Okay. May the Lord you know, bless you. Praise himself and Hashem praise himself. So I'm going to celebrate with myself and take myself out on Father's Day. May the Lord bless you travel, brother. Thank you, brother. Now, what did you say about hard of hearing? Go ahead. Okay. So we have a person here in, um, that's part of the UPC movement. Oh, man. Yeah. And I'm trying, to, I'm trying to defend the doctrine of the Trinity. And I came yes. across a few of your videos. And did I you watch because my debates? What's that? Did you watch my debates with Stephen Ritchie and Stephen other... Ritchie? Uh, Stephen Ritchie, also a guy named Stacy something. I forgot his yeah, name. Stacy Stupidville. Just go yeah, ahead. yeah. And I and I seen you brought up a, a, a point about the Proston Dion. Yes. Now I'm not I'm not a Greek scholar, so I don't even know where to begin. But I seen other Trinitarian Jews that point too. I would love I would love for you to explain to me how. How do I prove this point? And and yeah. and I seen because you referenced it with John thirteen three. Yes, you don't need to know the Greek. You can just ask them. In John one one to two, if you get you your strong, well, you can't do a strong uh, interlinear. Find you an interlinear like here. I'll show you an interlinear here. Bible Hub has got the best interlinear. I'm going to show it to you right now. Okay. And you don't need to know Greek because I'm not a Greek scholar, but I've learned enough to be able to handle myself by the power of the Holy Spirit and His grace and mercy. All right, now. I'm going to show you what it is. Guys, he's dealing with someone who believes that Jesus is the Father, the human manifestation of the Father. These one is heretics. And he wants to know how to refute them. The UPC is the largest anti-Trinitarian modalistic group in the world. United Pentecostal churches, they're all Jesus only. They're the largest body of oneness modalist heretics. And they have millions of followers. We need to do something to show them the true God. But now... Here it is in private chat, and I'm going to put it here in the comment section. Now, here it is. Now, if you go there, you click on it. I'll try to show it to you on the screen. You don't even need to know how to read Greek because it transliterates the Greek for stupid people like me. All right? And I'm going to walk you through this. You ready? Okay. All right. And then hope. And I got articles on this as well. I mean, I keep getting tired of saying I got articles on this because it sounds like I'm advertising, even though I don't charge. All right. 
Well, here it does. This one doesn't. Yeah, it does. It gives you the transliteration. Okay. Right there. You see it? Yep. Exactly. I got the link. I, I got the link on my computer. I'm, I'm looking at it on, on my screen. Ostantheon. You see it? Yep. So right there, it says, K ologos and prostontheon. Prostontheon. Okay. Prostontheon is with God. Prostontheon means with the God. Okay. Now, let me explain how you turn this against them. In John 16, 25 to 31. John 16, 25 to 31, which I'm going to put on the screen. Give me one okay. second. Give me one second, uh, Sam. Let me write. Let me write this down. You said John sixteen. Well, remember, you also have it recorded. You always can come back. Don't panic. You're not, it's, I'm not going anywhere unless they delete my. Are you thinking they're going to delete my channel? Is that why you're paranoid? No, because I'm following you. So I want to. I want to keep up, and I'm writing it down, taking notes. Okay, John sixteen twenty five to thirty one. Watch John here. 16. Okay, go ahead. Thirty five to thirty one. Twenty five to thirty one. I'm sorry. I'm going to because you're King James, and I believe King James is the perfect translation. Awesome. Even though you don't see me using it, it's because of people in English. I don't want that to be a barrier. But anyway, let me do authorized King James Version. Because the king ain't on it. King ain't in it, Tim. What are you saying, about Brother Rodison? All right. <laughs> okay, here you go. John 16, 25, 31. Guys, this is some of the powerful arguments to destroy modalism. Pay attention to the delivery. It's all about the delivery. Okay. These things I have spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time cometh when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. I want to explain plainly, right? So emphasize. He's speaking plainly, right? Yep. Okay. At that day, ye shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you, for the Father himself loveth you, because ye have loved me, and I believe that I came out from God. Now notice, you have loved me and believed I came out from God. Okay? I came forth from the Father and am come into the world. I leave the world and go to the Father. Go to the Father. You see that lo lo the last three words? Yep. To the Father. You go to the Bible Hub. It's pros ton patera. Pros ton patera. Go to the Father. Identical to John 1.1. But in John 1.1, it's, it's with God, you with me there? Yeah. So, so the last word, the last words, I came out from the Father, is prostantheon again? No. no, the last words of the last verse, brother. Not, not twenty-eight. That's not the last verse. What's the last words? Go to, go to the Father. Okay, I was yeah. in twenty-five. Okay, the words okay. to the Father, to okay. the Father. I it's it. pros ton patera. The word to is pros. Same word in John one one with pros ton theon God. To pros the Father. Now, this is what you asked him. When Jesus went to the Father, did he go there as an actual conscious living person? Because they believe he's a man. Yes. So he didn't go there as an idea? No. So Jesus went to the Father as an actual person, right? Yes. So he's an actual person there. That's what they'll tell you. Right? Because he's a man still. So that man, he's that man Jesus, he's there, right? Yeah. So here Jesus goes there as an actual conscious man to be with the Father. So they can't say it's simply an idea. But now Jesus said he's speaking plainly. He's not speaking figuratively. So if the going to the Father is literal, he went there as an actual person. Then when he came from the Father into the world, why is that metaphorical? Uh. You can't have one without the other. Because as I came from the Father into the world, I'm leaving the world to go to the Father. So if the leaving the world to the Father is actual, then the coming into the world from the Father must be actual. Awesome. And in verse right. 25, verse 25 specifically says that I speak plainly. Oh, yeah, but 29 to 31, I didn't finish it. Now watch okay. 29 31. Here is the annihilation. 29 31. His disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly. See? You're not yep. speaking figuratively, so they can't say this is figurative. Yep. And speakest no proverb. Now, watch the confirmation that him speaking plainly, they realize he actually did come down from the Father. Now are we sure that thou knowest all things? So you know everything. We don't need to question you to see if you do. And it is not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe, what? That thou comest forth from God. Ah. 
So you did literally come from the, from the Father into the world. Amazing. Jesus answered them, do you now believe it? You finally got it? So if pros ton patera to the Father means he actually went there as an actual person, conscious and living, then when John 1 says he was with God, pros ton teon, and came from God into the world, that has to be literal as well. Especially God. in John 16, he says, I'm speaking plainly. So I came from the Father into the world. I'm leaving the world, going to the Father. And he's speaking literally. So I'm literally going to the Father, which means he literally came down from the Father. You can't have one without the other. That's what you do. Fantastic. Love you, man. And then we'll take it from there. All right, brother? Thank you. God bless you. Lord be with you. All right. Great questions. Now, guys, Hussein Meshni should be going live. So let's see. Go support the brother. Help his channel increase and pray for him and his wife, their ministry, because you got two hours and 30 minutes. I'm going to have to retitle this, God willing. He's going to be going live. This is his channel. Look for it. He should be going live maybe in half an hour. So we'll wrap it up. Marcel, I love you, brother, but we got to wrap it up, dude. So here it is. Go to channel. I hope you're blessed. I hope you learn. I hope you're challenged, convicted. You're moved in the spirit to fall more passionate in love with Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit working through me. And I pray I practice what I preach. And I hope you saw how amazing the Bible is. But brethren, if you love me, you got to commit yourselves to praying for me. And my daughters, you are called, I'm called to serve one another, love one another by our deeds. Some of you have been called to just pray. You're intercessory prayer warriors. That's all you do is pray. Praise, bathe, bathe my daughters and I in your prayers. That the Lord will grant my daughters and I divine, miraculous, supernatural, physical safety, security, protection, and health, that God give me this one, stay healthy, not to fall into food addiction because my weakness is food and lust. The Lord purge me to stay healthy and fit and use my health to glorify Christ, to keep my daughters healthier than me. They outlive me if Jesus tarries. Please, Lord. And the miracle of bringing them to me now, I'm tired, brethren. Father's Day is coming up. Another weekend without my daughters. Another weekend where I'm going to have to travel and celebrate Father's Day with myself. Another weekend where my daughters will be with a man named Martin Simon Yako, a heathen and unregenerate adulterer who became an adulterer because an adulteress married him. She didn't repent, who doesn't speak English, who's a broken family, who's got his own son, and yet he's in the life of my kids, something I didn't want for them. Dalton, I don't know who you are, buddy, so I'm going to have to block you. I'm going to send you back to Mecca if you don't tell me you are. you got five seconds. Five, four, three, two. Hasta la vista, you little bastard. Anyway, pray the miracle that God will bring them sooner than later and that they'll be in my life. And I raise them. And if the Lord tarries, I see them grow up and they send me to be with Jesus. And pray for the sports to stay steady. And I never shame Jesus, never fail Jesus, never fall into any scandal, never fall into lust, temptation, or idolatry or blasphemy, but walk worthy of Jesus Christ until the Lord summons me. May the Father have mercy on us. May the Son of God have mercy on us. May the Holy Spirit have mercy on us. May Jesus increase in us, in our loved ones, in my daughters, even their mother, to repent. And the Holy Spirit seal my daughters, your loved ones, their mother, and seal us to love Jesus Christ more perfectly and walk worthy of the Lord. In the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name we pray. We love you, Father. We love you, Lord Jesus. We love you, Holy Spirit. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ is alive and he's almighty to save and we trust in you, Lord. And he will return physically to judge the living and dead. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. Maranathe. I love you guys for the sake of the Lord. Theotokos, pray for us. Queen Mother, pray for us. Queen of Angels, pray for us. Panagia, pray for us. Aipartanos, pray for us. We need your intercession. Holy Mary, our Mother, pray for us. Because your intercession is powerful and you're alive, perfected in the presence of your son. No matter what any slander says, and pray the Lord Jesus will use me to silence the slanders and blasphemies of Kelly Powers and others, to teach them the fear of the Lord. We honor you and love you for the sake of Jesus. Pray for us, Holy Mary, Mother of God. Glory to the Father, Son, and Spirit. Take care.